uh, execute it on live. Now, there is an idea that if you had the right bandwidth and if they were, if their servers weren't total crap, where you have a box that connects to your TV and all the horsepower and computing is done on the other end and is just streamed to your TV. If it, in, it, it sounds great in theory. Unfortunately, it didn't work in the real world. Anybody who has the unfortunate uh, distinction of owning an OnLive will tell you that. Um, <laughs> and yes, I have two of them. But um, it's it, that would be the way to that would be the way to go for the next console, uh, where you subscribe to a service, you don't have a physical disc, you don't have to worry about uh, your drivers being all updated and having the latest graphics card. That's all done on the other end, and uh, you you just have the receiver box that. Uh, receives the signal and plays the game for you <laughs> see stan farina says we need we still need faster than light data transfer for that <laughs> exactly and i mean uh playing a game on on live uh looked like uh, you had smeared vaseline all over your television set and then it would crash you know uh 20 minutes later i actually you know took assassin's creed to broho on the on the 360 played it on there uh had it ready to go on on live and god it just looked you know it, it looked like i was playing on an, a standard deaf tv yeah a hazy look we, we, yeah and that's that's another reason why i don't think we can go 100 percent digital anytime soon because there's a lot of people that do not have reliable enough internet they can play hmm. games online but that they're they're pushing the envelope with that. You want them to do everything else completely online, then that's crazy. Especially streaming content like that, that's nuts. But uh, we see we can get into a chat all about. <laughs> we're, we're getting everybody fired up in the chat right now. <laughs> Man, all right, let's keep going with the news because that 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 is gonna open up a whole can of worms. But I think we all agree that uh. The, the consoles need to open up and change up their model if they're going to really... And it's you know what's funny about it, too? A lot of news I read says the PC is dying, the PC gaming is dying, but every year it's posting more and more sales numbers. Not to mention, and I said we're going to move on, but I just want to say this part. I mean, for the developers, it's a better deal to publish on a PC because they don't have to pay the crazy, insane, exorbitant freaking licensing fees, and it's much easier for them to develop for the PC. You and know. you can sell it digitally, you know, there's no shipping, there's yeah. no box, there's, so, I mean, it's, yeah, I mean, and I would say more people are migrating from consoles to PC as people get either more comfortable messing around with computers, uh, there's still, you know, there's still the h hardcore, or those that just really don't want to deal with all that crap, like me, um, but I, I mean, more and more, I'm seeing people switch over to PC than uh, the consoles. Yeah, yeah. And you know, some people say, well, another thing is you get Red Ring of Death. Uh, mm -hmm. Matthew is listening that on, on, on the consoles, but you know, you get something equivalent to that on PCs. I mean, again, you do something wrong, you you, you don't take care of your computer, you don't build it properly, whatever, it, it could blow up on you. But it's 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 shame on 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 you know. Microsoft and Sony for having hardware defects, you know, and not addressing them properly. You know, it's, they should be doing better quality assurance, especially when uniformity is supposed to be their strong suit. But well, anyway. I think. Well, I think that I think this generation, you know, Microsoft learned from the their three billion dollar mistake last time, <laughs> and I think you know so far, the hardware has stood up pretty well. I mean, there's anecdotal uh issues uh and people will have it problems but it's not as widespread as it was last generation mm -hmm. and, and to be fair sony had their own plethora of issues but since microsoft had them first they got attacked first and it became widespread because i have a, a ps3 that's bricked and i have no interest in getting it fixed <laughs> so there's that too by the way 
I don't know if you guys got this, uh, you know, we're moving on with the news here. Did you guys get this weird email uh, that a bunch of, of, of these news sites uh, and investment sites uh, were saying that the internet's dead? And I'm like, what the hell? Yeah, I got, I saw something on that. So yeah, Motley Fool and Wall Street Journal saying the internet's dead, that's no longer viable, blah, blah, blah. They're like, oh, as an investment. But they're saying, but they're also trying to hint at the fact that they're building something that's going to be better than the internet. And I'm like, yeah, the internet hasn't been perfected yet. Don't don't bet on anyone replacing that infrastructure that's taken decades to build. I mean, you know, it's been, the internet's been around since 69, or, or pretty much. You know, it's ARPANET or whatever, and it's still, you know, not at its peak. So I just find that funny. I thought I'd share that fun little news site. But don't worry, no, everyone, the internet's not dead. It's not going anywhere. It's not gonna be privatized. You're not gonna lose your 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 broadband, and uh, I know Obi was particularly scared about that. He started uh, putting food and water in his fallout shelter, his bunker, underground bunker. I started stacking broadband in there too. <laughs> <laughs> and, you got a, you got uh, a pile and, uh, of sticks sticks of gigs, too. And, sticks and, of gigabytes and a couple on live consoles. Um, Roger and ten four, and I uh, also put uh, a few uh, processing uh, gigaboots in there as well. So we'll have everything for a supercomputer if the end of the world goes. You're ready, and just and just, and just have a backup communication device, uh, some cans and some string, and then you'll be okay. Those are already completed. My son made them yesterday. We're good to go. <laughs> Yeah, that's child labor. We gotta be careful with that. Hey, no, it's not because I don't pay him. <laughs> it's ah, child you slavery. Follow, you follow loophole. <laughs> CPS can't come after you. <laughs> nope. So not actually, that actually, well, actually, actually I made them. And he just kind of said, "What were you doing, Dad? Dad? What are you doing, Dad? Nothing." You go play your video game. He did the QA. He checked them and made sure they worked properly. He was the supervisor, more or less, of the operation. Okay, that's fair. That yeah. works. So, hey, lo- lots of Blizzard news this this week. Uh, so, this is the this is the fun part of the news because <laughs> I'm excited about this stuff. So, uh, where do we even start? Well, Heroes of the Storm, formerly known as beginning, yeah, the beginning Blizzard Dota. Uh, and, and I think you still play Blizzard Dota right now. I don't know how popular it is right now in StarCraft Two, but uh, now Heroes of the Storm is, has entered a technical alpha phase. And uh, for those that don't know, this is a MOBA or arts, if you preferred, uh, or he- they qualify it as a a hero combat uh, game. It's all the same thing. Basically, t- picture a uh, RTS game where you just control one really powerful unit and you just micromanage that unit instead of a whole you know army of units. That's basically what a MOBA is in, in simple terms. But a select few people will be invited. Um, I haven't been able to find out exactly how many people are going to let in, but they say friends and family only from my, according to contacts and different sources that I've followed up with, I might be getting in on this. So if I do, I'm going to let you guys know, I'm going to try to get you in, in it too, OB. Make sure you're opted in on uh, the battle.net settings. OB, I, well, I thought you were going to say something. He was on a storm, dude. This is big news. Something that's going to compete with Dota 2 and League of Legends. I'm really sorry to say it this <laughs> for all my followers <clears throat> in the Blizzard world. Obi Obi oh, One X Two has retired from WoW. <laughs> but this is that WoW. This is separate. I've retired from Blizzard. Oh Lord, you're breaking my heart, bro. But the Diablo. We're going. Three... We're going with Riot. Wait, um, what about Hearthstone? And we're going. Nope. Sorry. <gasps> uh, Obi-1X2 is now retired. You bastard. Um, until tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Okay, moving uh, on. No, no, I can't wait for the Titan. Um, the if titan. I can talk straight, the yeah, t- the Titans. <laughs> the Titans. I The Titans for my computer, man. Sorry, I'm thinking about two different Titans here. Okay, my bad. <laughs> Um, but no, I can't wait for uh, Blizzard to come out with that. Um, I think it's going to be interesting for the most part. Um, have you seen it? Have you seen it in action to... yet? Um, no, I haven't. I'm trying to find it it's wherever sexy. I can get it. But 
It is sexy. Uh, send me a link if you can. Um, but I would like to, you know, just to try because if it's something that's actually going to compete with with Dota or, or and or League of Legends, I love League of Legends. You guys know that. I don't necessarily love Dota, but I, I, I'm I'm trying it. Yogi's actually teaching me a little bit how to how to play a little bit. We got we got to play more together. We got to play more to have something that's bit. WoW oriented, or Blizzard oriented. Whether it's going to be StarCraft or you know even the, all their all their games mixed in as different champions, you know or whatever, that would be awesome to be able to fight against our, the Barbarian from Diablo. Fighting against a warlock from World of Warcraft. Yes. Hell yeah. Dude, you could do I'd it. I'd be badass. You I will could... definitely be on that train. But Obi. I'm not playing WoW well anymore. I'm not Obi, playing. listen to me, bro. <laughs> it's everything you love about WoW or any Blizzard game outside of Hearthstone without the grinding. What is there not to love about it? You start off oh. with all your abilities to start with. So that already is a huge change. To mo the mobile formula all your abilities you have them all unlocked from the beginning right and you get to play as like, tyrio the angel like, from diablo like Dude. i said like i said when it comes out and it gets to the point where i can actually get my hands on it even if it's in beta or whatever i'll you know with what i'm doing now i don't really i try to spend a little bit more time with my wife um <laughs> you know i try to spend some time with the family because i mean my wife's going to be growing here so fast, I might, I don't know how long I'll be available. I might be, you know, flying around the country with her. So, you know, it's just, I, I want to make sure that I'm on here as much as possible playing what I love to play with the people that want to play. So, anyway, let's move on. So, yeah, so yeah, more about the Heroes of the Storm. Uh, they have official confirmation that uh, the character is going to cost between four. And four dollars and ten dollars. Well, three ninety nine and nine ninety nine. That's gonna be the price point. It's gonna make it about on par with League of Legends, uh, but kind of more expensive than Dota two, unless you count the full sets of uh, items for the characters. Um, the neat thing though is that uh, you know how League of Legends, and a lot of you guys that that you know followed us in the beginning know that we love League of Legends. And we talk a lot about League of Legends and uh, we go deep in it. But you know, they a lot of times they do skins. And they all they do is palette swaps. <laughs> you know, they change the colors on on, 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 on the skins, and then they they sell them as new skins. But these skins are really nice skins that they have, and you could change the color on the skins to your liking without having to pay extra for that for the colors. So that's cool. So they're doing they've really seen what everyone's doing in the market. Smite, Dota Two, League of Legends, Guardians of Middle Earth, I man, Heroes of New Earth. They've learned from all those games. And taking all the crap out of it, and again, they built the game that's accessible to the masses. And mm. it, 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 this is the MOBA that people that normally do not like MOBAs will be will be playing. Uh, I really like what I've seen. Um, I mean, they even have a thing where there's no individual leveling anymore. This is one of the biggest issues with MOBAs. It's a lot. A lot of times, it's like Call of Duty, where you get the lone wolf mentality, where it's like teamwork. Teamwork. What's that? And people just do whatever they want, and they're, they're all worried about kill-death ratio. You steal a kill, and they're like, oh, you, you still kill-stealing bastard, blah, blah, blah. But here, there's no individual leveling. There's no individual acknowledgement of your, your stats. So it's all team leveling and team objectives, team, team um, accomplishments. I, I love that model. That's so cool because it's going to reduce the toxicity that we see like in League of Legends, which has possibly... Very arguably the most toxic community out there. <laughs> what what do you say about that, Ovi? You... There's nothing to say. Okay. You're 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 talking so much about it right now. I don't even want to play it now. If <laughs> I can't get a, if I can't get ahead of somebody now, if I can't get ahead of them or in a specific lane or whatever, because we're the same in in in, in basic as instance. I mean that's gonna be boring as. Fuck. It's not though because it comes down to. Teamwork. I'm using my own beeps, guys. When I oh. say boring as, beep, you know, it's a little bit belated, but I don't say the word. But anyway, it's gonna be boring. No way, dude. Because dude. You, you haven't seen the battles. The battles are freaking epic. The thing is, even on League of Legends, people worry so much about the individual uh, prowess of players that they lose the fact that the teams teams lose games and they win games, and that's really what it comes down to. If you have no teamwork, it doesn't matter if you have the best player in the world. If you suck as a team, you're not going to get anywhere. You're not going to push lanes. You're not going to take objectives. 
and this just makes it very obvious. I, dude, I'm telling you, it works. It's very action-packed. You could play, instead of the usual 30 minutes to hour-long matches, you could play a match in 20 or 30 minutes. That's a big difference. That's one of the huge... There's a lot of barriers in MOBAs as, as, as they are. And even though it may seem boring, there's a lot of depth in there for those that want to play on a deeper level, that want to be more strategic and, and, and set themselves apart. So you can still stand out. It's just that's not the focus. All right, I'll sell you on it yet. Anyway, Maybe. moving on. <laughs> so, so Hearthstone went live uh, on uh, March 11th, 2014. Woo! You know, uh, last Tuesday, and uh, we totally forgot to to uh, give you guys a heads up on this. So, if you wanted to get the gold card by spending money in the store, too late. Don't worry, I, I didn't get one either. So, no worries. I did. Um, there's a whole slew of changes to it. One of the things they they, they retooled was Tink Master Overspark. He's now a three three with the random morph effect, uh, and they nerfed a lot of things to make it look a lot more balanced because they noticed a lot of people were auto including certain cards. And Chip, this this might interest you because I know you've been uh, on the fence about Hearthstone, right? Oh, well, I'm not on the fence. I'm just you waiting for it to come. For... iPad. He's okay. wait. He's already over the top. Guys. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, so here, so here we go. So they're, they're, they're listening to the community and they're making it a lot more balanced. Um, the, the, the classes that were kind of OP, so to speak, they've made them a, a lot more on par with everything. And the game is the most balanced it's been yet. And they've had a lot of nice little features. Like if you get 500 ranked wins, you earn a golden hero um, and lots of neat other stuff. But the best part about it, and this is the part for Chip, Hearthstone is coming to iOS in a few weeks. Yeah. According to my sources, it, it might be a, they say they say by eight by May or June, but I think it's gonna happen mid April. You quote me on that. It's Just in time for my birthday. Things. Yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna make it. We'll be playing a lot more. There's something about having on a mobile device that makes it easier to get into those kind of games. So I'm with once, you on that chip. And then you once have no again, excuse. ease of installation. Buy, and then <laughs> you know it's there. It may be the game that finally gets me away from Puzzle Quest. Yeah, dude, I will. I will force you to play with us. <laughs> I definitely, I definitely want to try it, dude. You'll yes, have fun with it. You'll have. Fun he is with physically going to come to your house. He's going to strap you in the damn chair, put it to where you can only touch the mouse and only touch the keys that you're allowed to touch, and then he's going to make you. Make sure you had twigs in your eyes so you can keep them open for hours on end and make you play this game. We were going to sit there right next to you with laptops while we play. Hey, I look, for, I look forward to it. That should be enough. Should well, he, be enough. Here's what's even better. Here's what's even better. The, the iPad app is going to be completely cross-platform, and soon after that, they're going to make it release on Android. But that's going to be a little later, probably in the summer. But it's going to be completely cross-platform, so you have access to all your cards across the platform. Unlike what Marvel Puzzle Quest did, which I, I can't believe they did that, but when they released the Steam version, it was a completely standalone experience. Ugh. Yeah, and which is why I've never downloaded the the Steam version because I'm not I'm not building up a roster like this ever again. Oh yeah, dude. After all the time we put into it, and you especially, you're like a you're like the top one percent in the in the game. <laughs> well, uh, this this week I I uh, had dropped. Uh, more money in the in the game than I have in the six months that I've played played it. Uh, buying slots for the B Team Alliance. Yeah, and by yeah. the way, join yeah. join us on the B Team Alliance, guys. Uh, no, 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 no. There's no slots open, oh. and it's costing me ten bucks a slot now. Holy <laughs> Hannah, it scales that much? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's uh, it start the first slot uh, additional slot was six hundred coins, seven hundred, eight, nine. It's up to 1,100 coins, so I'm not buying any more slots until they have a sale on Hero Coin. Oh, so it's like it's just like the, the buying the the storage space. The the more spots you buy for covers, yeah. the more it scales up. That's crazy. Yeah. I still but, say I still say you should try out Soul Forge. By the way, yeah, when I have time. I know, I know. It's a lot of games on the platter, but uh oh, someone in the chat uh, wanted to call you out, Chip. Uh, they said when when you're not uh, joining in on the chat, you're playing on a uh, mobile device. Apparently, is this true? Say it ain't so. I take the fifth. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, just tell him. Yes, I am. Sorry, I'm having a good time. Tell me when you need me to talk. <laughs> there. Oh man. All right. So we're almost done with the news here. 
Here's another little bit of, of fun. Uh, hardcore gamer Ray Cox reached one million, uh, one million gamer score on Xbox. Cox. Yeah, Cox <laughs> reached one million <laughs> gamer score on the Xbox One while playing uh, Titanfall, and he did this while p- using a special white developer version of the console that he got during the launch. And he says he says that he there were days where he played for 20, do- 20 hours a day. Now I love gaming, and it's one of the things I'm very passionate about. But I think after, after no, doing that hours much, a damn day. Yeah, dude. I if I played that much, I would probably hate video games for a long time. <laughs> and but he's hey, making me not want to play video games ever again. Dude, I know he's playing enough video games for all of us. Uh, uh, one million, uh, one million gamer score, dude. And and he's got some free stuff from Microsoft because of it. Yeah, but do you actually care about your gamer score anymore? No, and you talked about this recently mm-hmm. on, on B Team that uh, yep. the achievement system used to be a thing that would would create make uh, the experience more sticky, but now it, it, sometimes it could be a bit of a deterrent, uh, almost uh, discouraging, especially if, if if you're competitive and you see how far ahead your friends are. And I think that I, I don't care so much about the gamer score or the achievements. Sometimes they do help you experience the game. In a fun way, maybe the way the developers expect you to play the game or intend you to enjoy the experience. But I hate achievements. Tell me what you guys think. I hate achievements that make you do things that break the game, that make you go get out of the normal flow of the game to a point where it's no longer fun. Like, uh, let's pl- say you're playing a fighting game and the achievement is um, die 50 times in a row while uh, ducking down and farting. I mean, you know, and, and twiddling your thumbs, I don't know, something stupid. It's like, why would I do that in a normal, you know, course of things? <laughs> but, or, or, or do 200 laps on Gran Turismo, you know, for, for, for four hours. I mean, that doesn't sound like fun to me. <laughs> I mean, sometimes I thought some of the achievements were uh, interesting. Bec- and we br- I think Chris brought it up on the show. And, it, and you, it did make you play the game differently than you would normally or do something that uh, you wouldn't normally try to do. Uh, the example I always use is in Orange Box, and it was either Half-Life 1 or 2, uh, you had to uh, do the whole game with only shooting one bullet. And, you know, it, it certainly was something I would have never tried, but I saw the and I was only going to play through the game once. Um, it, it certainly brought a new challenge to the game. And, uh, you know, I'm at when I did it, I, you know, I felt a great sense of accomplishment. Um, the score itself, yeah, I mean, who cares what, what's the size of your e-penis? It just, you know, doesn't matter. <laughs> And I, I, I actually love Orange Box, and I there was also another achievement in there. I think it was in Episode One of Half Life Two, where uh, the part where you go through that whole zombie infest, uh, infested town, well, head crab infested town, and uh, it's like the shanty town, uh, Ravenwood, I think it was called. And you had to beat it without mm-hmm. using any regular guns. The only thing you could use is um, the gravity gun to okay. use to use nope. to throw uh, objects around, and that. That actually was fun because it made it so much more intense, especially when they started rushing you and you're trying to pick up a saw, uh, mm-hmm. a saw blade and, and throw it at people and chop off their heads. And if you missed, it'd bounce off their arm and it'd keep coming after you. That, that was fun. Yeah, I mean, the, some achievements are, you know, have uh, have added to the game and a lot are just s- stupid crap. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, while I'll look at the list to see what they are and if it's something that seems like it would be a, fu- a fun challenge or something like that, yeah, maybe I'll go ahead and do it. Uh, the killing, what was it, 54,495 zombies in Left for Dead 1. It took me 120 hours, but I did it. Um, and, you know, it, yeah, you uh, know, it was just, mm-hmm. okay... I'm going to do this. And I, it took me about three months and, you know, you were basically farming zombies uh, most of the time, but uh, you know, it was just something to do. And it certainly added many hours of gameplay to uh, my $60 purchase. 
Yeah, and and if it adds more replay value, I think that's a good thing. But uh, yeah, then some of them are very very stupid. And I, yeah, I definitely agree. The gamer score I don't think is as relevant. I guess some people, for the very competitive, they might be it might be something where they're comparing you know proverbial penis size. But for the rest mm. of us, it's like okay, whatever. <laughs> oh man, but proverbial anyway, uh, penises or e penises, e e penises. Anyway, e pen e peni. E P nine, there you go. E P nine, got it. Hey, Obi, Captain, you wanna? Uh, you need to move over just a little bit back into your camera. Do I want to do what? You want to do the the last bit of the news? No, man, it's all you. <laughs> I'm waiting for the feature, man. <laughs> all right, so Namco's uh, Shifty Look Studio is uh, being shut down. Uh, this is the division that promotes and and breathes new life into old Namco properties like Bravo Man, and you know most of us don't know have any idea what this crap is, but. For those that are in the in uh, in the know about it, uh, it's kind of sad. Uh, supposedly they had online comics. They had a dating sim called Namco High, and some other digital properties, some other online games that are gonna disappear uh, come June, uh, 2014. So if you want to still experience these uh, games, get on it before they disappear. Again, I honestly did not know even half of these things existed, but you know it's kind of sad to hear. It. To see so many companies are shutting down. Even um, our friends over at PopCap, I know people that started that company that work over there, they've had massive layoffs. And um, uh-huh. John Vecchi, uh, JV, one of my buddies, uh, he posted on Facebook talking about uh, how he's, you know, his, heart is, his heart was heavy. It was just sad to hear about you know, these studios shutting down. But uh, fortunately, Namco, Namco does seem committed to pick up where Shifty Look left off and continuing most of their... Uh, most popular platform so we'll see what happens there and hopefully the um people that lose that lost their jobs are gonna you know get work elsewhere um all right let's see what else we got over here our friend over at all games uh dc nate has announced uh, the underground throne kickstarter i wanted to mention this uh they got like, about 19 days to raise 8k and that's that's a modest goal for a de- development of, of a game uh, most of that's going to go towards graphic de- uh graphics you know art whatever and uh, it's pretty neat because this is a Dungeon Keeper uh, clone. And, you know, you guys know how I feel about that because, uh, uh, what was it, uh, War for the Overworld and uh, Mighty Quest, all awesome games. And uh, Chip was talking about a Dungeon Keeper tabletop game, right, on B-Team? Uh, oh, uh, Boss Monster? You said something about, I think, Boss Monster, and I think you said yeah. something about Deception. Tecmo's Deception, which actually... Tecmo Deception Four comes out next week on the PlayStation Three, and this and is like, and these are like uh, kind of spiritual spinoffs of uh, Dungeon Keeper type games. I'm not sure if uh, Deception came before uh, Dungeon Keeper. I mean, we're going back to PlayStation One uh, in the early days. Well, Dungeon Keeper, if I'm if I'm not mistaken, was when Peter Molyneux was with Bullfrog back in mm-hmm. like ninety four, ninety five. So yeah, around, so it's got to be right around the same time. So yeah, oh. but I, I know a lot of people consider Dungeon Keeper the original, but uh, yeah, that's pretty neat. I didn't know there was so many. Now that I, I'm aware of the spinoff, I'm seeing so many more of them come out. <laughs> And apparently Peter Molyneux uh, gives his blessing every time. He, he's like, hey, yeah, because I'm not going to make Dungeon Keeper 3, so keep doing it, guys. Make your little spinoffs. <laughs> You're not going to fight them on it, so that's kind of neat. So, yeah, support uh, Underground Throne on Kickstarter. Look it up. Uh, they got um, a company called Paw Bite. They got uh, like an eighteen eight person team. And uh, they definitely got a nice little prototype of alpha build you can play with. Nice little project. I think it's going to be cool. Um, and it's a labor of love, so help them out, Obi. Hey, whenever things, when it, when anything, something a labor of love, even if I'm doing it, um, I want people to help me out too. Uh, just like with this, with horseplay and our geeky antics. I mean, you guys are just kicking us off like, like the right way. I mean, this it's cool. I'm so stoked. I know we're not even talking about this right now. But he just asked me if I had any news. And this is the news that I have for you guys. Thank you. You guys are really <laughs> meaning a lot to me. Oh, I, I saw you leaning over, so I didn't know if you wanted to throw something into the into the hat. Oh, that's... Well, I thought we were at the end, actually, when you what's say, what's oh, this we about? any news. <laughs> I think <laughs> that's I think my this, news for the day, guys. That's that's very good news, and I second that. This is the last piece of a, a real news, though. Uh-huh. And then we got a, a quick update. 
um, which hopefully comes in a timely manner. But uh, anyway, Google just bought um, bought out Green Throttle Games, uh, maker of the Android game pads. And um, GTG was actually founded by, uh, I believe, one of the co-founders of Guitar Hero uh, or Red Octane. So it's kind of neat. A little history there. Uh, I didn't I didn't dig too deep into this news story, but I thought it was kind of interesting because a lot of rumors are popping up now that Google's trying to race to beat Apple into the gaming sector and, you know, bring gaming to the living room. And, uh, you mm -hmm. know, they're saying oh, Apple Apple has Apple TV and they can easily take the next step and make it to a gaming system. And I, Amazon, had, I heard about that the other day. Yeah. So Don't get too much on this because I could go off on this. I could have a tangent. Yeah, <laughs> dude. <laughs> Well, we've all, I think we've already, uh, you know, precluded this conversation by saying that councils are hurting and I think any other big players into the marketplace are going to have something else waiting for them. But anyway, um, all right. So uh, last week we talked about, anyway, these are some updates. Uh, last week we talked about um, Hum Bundle and it's awesome Sega Weekly Bundle. But we forgot to mention that they have a three-day sale on all the Sega games. You can save up to 80% on, on all the like, Sega games they have in the Humble Bundle store. So I think it's still going now. It might, it might still go on until tomorrow, Friday, what's tomorrow, the 21st. Mm -hmm. So if you listen to us in, in time, then jump on it because there's a lot of cool stuff there. And I, I know I uh, spent a little more than I should have and added more to my backlog of games. <laughs> the backlog that's a freaking actually a physical piece of paper long times 10. Yeah, the backlog. <laughs> Chip, like, you... I said last, like I said last week, guys. If you were to look at Yogi Zilla's log of how many games he has in just Steam alone. Oh, God. Not, not this again. Okay. If you guys know, <laughs> if you guys put your, your camera or your, your screen in full screen, all right, and you have a, uh, you know, just a, at least a 21-inch monitor, okay? I don't even know how I want to say it. The <laughs> scroll bar is literally one inch of his of your screen when he scrolls it down. He has that many games in his Steam profile thing, in his Steam games. <laughs> and I was like, have you ever played that one? He goes, oh, man, I didn't even know I had it. <laughs> really? <laughs> you know, that's ha that happened to me this past week. I went in my Humble Bundle library, and I saw that were games I didn't even claim yet. I'm like, oh, yeah, I want to play that. <laughs> didn't even claim yet. Are you serious? <laughs> Can you throw some my way that I don't have to claim for a couple of months and then be like, oh, hey, I'll play this one. I might be hooking up some people with some keys and uh, some gifts pretty soon. This guy. <laughs> That's like my shrink wrap collection for the consoles. Exactly. <laughs> we were even get into that. I have a whole stockpile of games that I, I want to play, but I know I might not ever get to them. Uh, but anyway, uh. uh so for those just tuning in, we have uh, Chip Sella with us, and uh, we're about to AKA, jump in. Yeah, AP, AKA Captain Chaos. You, you had to do that. <laughs> I did, dude. That's fun. <laughs> and you may know him from the B-Team podcast, and if you don't, shame on you. He's also on the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. cast. You can check it out. Check those shows out on uh, allgames.com, uh, on Stitcher, iTunes. They're, they're all over the place. They even have their own website. It's a nice website, so give them some love. Give me some props down the Twitters, down the social medias, <laughs> all, all the good stuff, man. And, and and for anybody that would like to know or is just curious, it's called the B Team Podcast because they are so good at what they do that the A Team Podcast quit, and they know there <laughs> there's no need for a C Team Podcast because they're all in the B Team. So that's why it's called B Team Podcast. <laughs> Check them out, guys. <laughs> Not really. I don't know. I was just making it up. <laughs> Sounded good. Oh, we, oh, we, we were was... the, We got our name because we uh, filled in for video game outsiders one week when they mm -hmm. weren't there to do E3. And I've always said if somebody spins off from us, they need to be called the C section. <laughs> oh, the spinoff from them is the D bags. It works. See that? Uh, I have to say, Chip is also a uh, a masterful uh, marketing uh, brander. He's <laughs> he's good at branding things, uh, whether it's naming an episode or uh, a segment <laughs> or or a show. So if you need help with some uh, titles for a book or whatever, hit him up. His, his services come cheap. He will work for beer. Uh, that's the word on the street. Uh, beer. <laughs> 
or or Yankees uh, memorabilia, or or Marvel Puzzle Quest tarot coins. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely coins. <laughs> I'm gonna do that all night long. You know that, right? Uh, I, it works. I, I like it. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That sounds like almost like Duke Nukem. <laughs> Duke Nukem does that. What, what? Oh yeah, die. Chip. Chip interviewed the voice of Duke Nukem, and he talked yeah. about how I saw that video. He talked about how whenever he did Duke Nukem voice, he had to do like this, this like almost paralyzed face with his teeth clenched. And he's like, "Oh yeah, oh <laughs> it, yeah." It's got to be one of the funniest interviews I ever did. I couldn't stop laughing. The guy yeah. just had me rolling. He was a good guy too. You could tell he was yeah. a really cool, dude. Well, I, well, I have uh, there's a bunch of guys that I hang out with on on Teamspeak. And, yeah, I'll just be talking, and I'll sneak into the channel they're all in. And they're like, hey, who just came in? And they'll be like, oh, hey, Obi, what's going on? I won't say anything for a few minutes, and they'll just say, okay, he's busy. Or I'll say, hey, what's up? And then I'll come off with, <clears throat> can we play? <laughs> Which really just really picks everybody up. Because they're like, oh, who just said that? Sound like a little girl. They're not expecting it to be me. So I'll again. Tabers. What? <laughs> Nobody knows where it's coming from because they're not looking at Teamspeak. <laughs> Have you seen my bear Tabers? No. And then they finally, Obi, that's not even funny, man. That freaked me out. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's like uh, instead of wedding crashes, it's uh, Teamspeak crashers, but it's just you trolling them. <laughs> Oh, I do it all the time because I'll sneak in there to where I don't have anything, uh, whether they have it turned on or not, anything ping when I join the room so I can sneak everywhere. And then I'll just come off with a, <laughs> just freak them out or just do whatever. You know, it's funny. I got you need to other... just, you got a career in uh, voice acting. No. <laughs> It's either, it's, it, it, and those that play League of Legends, you guys know who that is, of course. It's Annie. Now, when I'm in my happy mood, see, happy mood, <laughs> mad mood. Can you see the difference? Happy mood, mad mood. Can it's you very, see the difference? Good. It's very Christmas Stewart. Um, you know, the very it, wide exactly. range of uh, emotion. I know. I would think everybody could see that then. I mean, really. Well, when I'm in my happy mood, I'll come in there and just start. You know, then I'll start singing a song. Na 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 Elmo song. <laughs> and then, and just right off the bat, Obi, shut up. Sorry. <laughs> just yeah, just to make happy fun. Now anyway, we know. let's get to it. <laughs> you, you know, when we need some entertainment for the for the youngins, we know where to go. Oh yeah, send them to Obi. Okay, yeah. For those that are just listening to this, I just flipped Yogi off. <laughs> and thanks for listening, by the way, too. <laughs> All right. What's going on with Titanfall? Titanfall is out. What do you guys think? I'm... Hmm? Bilgy? Yeah, we, well, I was just saying, I think uh, there's still some... I noticed the buzz has uh, kind of died off, but there's still some people that think it's still the sli- best, thing, best things to slice bread. So if you, you know... Come on, let us know what you think. Call us on our voicemail line, 206-415-497. And also feel free to share your impressions. <laughs> and we'll compare, and Obi will compare with his. And we'll, we'll, we'll rate you too. We'll play up. You we'll show play the me voicemail yours, live. I'll show you mine. <laughs> we'll play the voicemail Wait. live. Wrong conversation, my bad. <laughs> <laughs> all, right. <laughs> all right, so let's move on to the part we're all here for before we get derailed anymore. Okay, here we go. Ready? Now, this is what you've all been waiting for the feature of today's show Marvelous MCU. Hi, guys. <laughs> Welcome to the feature. I don't know. I was just trying something new. <laughs> Sorry. It sounded really gay for a minute there. Then I was like, no, it's not gay because I'm straight. So we're good. That didn't make any sense either. So 
Yogi. <laughs> Enter awkward silence. <laughs> awkward silence, yes, but I don't want to make it silent. So I'm just trying to say, you know, keep it going with little words such as, uh, so, Yogi. <laughs> so Marvel's been on a roll lately, guys, right? How you oh, guys yeah. feeling about that? The Avengers? I mean, they feel like, uh, you know, maybe Marvel blew their load a little bit when they made the Avengers. Maybe anybody feeling a little bit optimistic or anything? Maybe Yogi? Hmm? <laughs> I, I, thought it would, I thought it would be tough to for them to top the Avengers. I mean, it was such a incredible movie. Something I've always, you know, I always dreamed of a big screen or even small screen Avengers live action series or movie. And uh, that they were able to pull it off without it sucking was uh, amazing. Well, yeah. and 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 even be, the Avengers before that, with the when the Thor movie came out, the first one, mm -hmm. I, I thought it was just awesome. I mean, the effects were there. Um, I mean, they could have probably done a little bit more into, uh, you know, with uh, was it Valhalla, um, Asgard. Wait, Asgard, sorry, my bad. Um, but they could have done a little bit more into uh, the Hall is Heaven, my bad. Uh, they could have done a little bit more into Asgard and actually showed a little bit more of that backstory. But, I mean, all around the movie was just good, and just ever since then, even with the Transformers movies, I know they're probably not the same company, and I'm sorry. But even with the same, even with the Transformers movies, they were just the, the graphics and the this, even the storyline wasn't really that great in two. Transformers 2. Um, we know it was going to happen. We know they were going to run together. We they know that the you know, you know him and her are going to you know they made it through the first movie. They're going to stick with each other. We know Bumblebee's going to be there. We know they're all going to be there watching him. They need to have more. If they're going to make any more of those, they need to have more different bots come down. Well, with turn into different things. I mean, even if it's more cars and trucks and stuff like that. They need to have different weaponry. I mean, the good guys need a couple of planes, dude. I'm sorry to say it, but the Decepticons got three planes and a helicopter. What's going on with that crap? You know what? <laughs> Imagine if Marvel picked up Transformers and did oh, those dude. movies and not have uh, and found Michael a way Bay. To combine them. Yeah, and found a way to combine the Marvel the Transformers with Avengers or something. They probably need some serious retcon, retcon for that, but... It'd be neat, maybe an alternate Thanks. universe. Mar Marvel did originally have the Transformers comic book license back yeah. in yeah. the 70s or 80s. Yeah, and true. I believe Spider-Man uh, did appear in a couple issues of the Transformers because they were in the same universe. Dude, can you imagine, though, on the big screen, without Michael Bay uh, focusing just on eye candy, like a real plot, real character development... You know, characters you love, not forgettable, forgettable people. You know, right? That... Well, go ahead. I was just say everybody in in the in the ever since Marvel has been committed to doing the Marvel Cinematic Universe proper. You know, as we talked about earlier, two thousand six and 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 up, or two thousand eight and up, whichever way you look at it. You know, they they really they're weaving this universe where there's no throwaway characters. Everyone has its place. Everyone mm -hmm. has their purpose, you know. There's no extras where they just kind of tacked on. It's like, okay, we just put this guy in here so he can get killed off, you know. So they're doing a really good job. There's so much depth in it. I mean, three hour, a three hour Avengers movie. I mean, that's epic. I mean, that's Lord of the Rings epic. And I, right. I'm looking well, forward to more. And two, with with holding people and killing people off, uh, the guy that plays Bucky. Am I going too fast in this? No, no, no. The guy that plays Bucky. I is is contracted for the for nine movies, but the director is it what? No, I'm sorry, Chris Evans is only contracted for six. Yeah, what's going on there? Well, um, oh, we kind of talked. Go ahead, sorry. We kind of talked about it on last night's Agents of Shield cast, and uh, I defer to Andy, my co-host, on that. But apparently, if you follow Marvel continuity. Uh, at the end of the Civil War, the Civil War storyline, Captain America is killed, mm -hmm. and Bucky, aka the Winter Soldier, becomes uh, the new Captain America. 
So is that is that and I'm I I'm really bad about mm. it and but is that what's going to happen in the the next Captain America then? It it won't be it's not in cap in the one coming out in a couple of weeks, but uh, I think we were discussing this last night, Yogi. That uh, could they try and do the Civil War storyline uh, at some point in, uh, you know, be, tell it over a series of movies, and maybe that's where they're going with it. Um, so, so you guys, so you guys see Marvel, and I know I'm sorry for cutting you off, Captain. I am the worst host in the world. But so you see in that that Marvel's probably gonna even go to the side of where where Lord of the Rings went, Star Wars, and where's going or is going, um, you know, and, th- and that kind of episodic movie line. I I think uh, right now uh, the way the way they. What they said la- uh, on the special the other night, the each Avengers movie is the end of a phase. Phase one was uh, all the fir- the original movies, Iron Man 1 and 2, Cap, Thor, and Avengers. Phase two it started with Iron Man 3, went into Thor, Captain America, Guardians of the Galaxy, and Avengers 2. And then uh, the only movie we know after that right now it is the ant-man movie that has been that they're working on um i think uh i think that yes they will continue to expand the universe as long as the movies uh they're able to make the these quality movies and uh make money at them uh you know my mind was blown in the first iron man movie with that after credits scene where Samuel L. shows up as Nick Fury and talks to yeah. Iron Man about the Avengers. It was like, whole, I mean, that, you know, I was like, I, I looked at my nine year old nephew. I go, holy shit. <laughs> well, and, and my and wife's this... looking at me like, what happened? Said, did you realize what, <laughs> do you realize what they just said? There's going to be an Avengers movie. <laughs> uh, well, and that being said, and that being said right there, what point are you? Are, do you think, in, in your personal opinion, uh, what point can the can Marvel get to to where it becomes just rerun, but of a different character? You know, just basically played out. Is there a point to that where that could happen? Well, they have so many characters with so many backgrounds and so many, you know, d- different abilities. I mean, could they run out of scripts? I don't know. They've been making comics for 60 years and have been able to come up with new and compelling stories on a monthly basis. Right. Well, and, and this is kind of a question for anybody that don't follow the, um, you know, the, the, the superhero mm-hmm. type or even the comic books. Um, and, and Yogi, what do you think about that? Is there ever a time where Marvel's going to run out of uh, basically new content where they don't have to refresh something? Uh, maybe make it a, 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 another the same movie, but with a different character and maybe setting. I think the way they're going right now, they could go at least a, a whole decade without having any uh, reboots. You know, I think they're very committed to like having the, all the different worlds be more seamless and, and tightly mm-hmm. integrated. Um, and and I, I, on one side, I'm kind of sad because I, I, I'm, I've always been a big, big fan of X Men. And um, I, I don't see X Men or X Force or Excalibur or any of those other X whatever <laughs> coming into the MCU uh, anytime soon, um, especially uh, where they left off the last X Men movie. Um, I think it was that one was kind of disappointing, but then they kind of left it open ended at the same time. But uh, it seems like they're very committed to like more of the Avengers universe and the natural crossovers that happen there. So we'll see. I mean, it'd be neat to see. Uh, you know, a little more uh, synergy. Like, uh, I, I'm not a big fan of the Amazing Spider-Man uh, movie they made, the the reboot. It, it was mm-hmm. cool in some aspects, and it was more true to the comics in some aspects. But then in other ways, it was like, eh, they could have done so much more with it. And I don't know. Yeah, but the new one looks awesome. It does. <laughs> have you seen the trailers? Oh, well, the new, and, new and one. I, oh no. Yeah. I'm what at- I think. With the with the with the new Spider-Man here, and I, and I'll stop talking here so we can keep going. But with the new Spider-Man, I think the with you know with the enhances with the graphics and everything else like that, 
Um, the, the trailers that I've seen are just, I can't wait just because of the action. Yeah. But when it comes down to when everybody thinks Spider-Man and they think of Peter Parker, they think of one actor. They think of Mary Jane being this person. They think of, you know, the new the Hobgoblin being, I don't remember the name, sorry. Um, but they think of being these certain people. Now that you do a whole revamp and you have different cast. I really, the only reason I'm going to watch it is because of the action sequences that I've seen in, on trailers. Well, can anybody I mean, really. else, can anybody else ever play Tony Stark after Robert Downey Jr.'s incredible performance? No. As him. I mean, no. and you, you can't know, do it unless you want to make a freaking uh, a sideshow. That's what it's going to be. Well, I mean, it, obviously the Marvel Universe is certainly, and uh, hopefully the the movie their movie studio outlast the lives of some of their these actors so at some point that's going to happen um and it's i think it's just you know deal with it um you i mean but obviously you're going to need some very masterful casting uh to replace tony stark and bring in somebody that can pull that off uh fortunately we still that's years down down the way uh in terms of yogi you're bringing up you know the x-men and the spider-man stuff the problem We're is into that <laughs> marvel Go doesn't ahead. marvel doesn't have those licenses they hoard them out to other studios years ago all right yeah, yeah. so you know uh sony has spider-man um yeah. so that's why you're not seeing uh, any of these characters or crossovers, and if if you're following the the after credit scene, they keep uh, seem they seem to be hinting towards uh, going towards the Infinity Gauntlet or Infinity War storyline with the Collector and the Infinity Gems. How the hell can you tell that story without Spider Man, the Fantastic Four, and the X Men in there? You can't. <laughs> No kidding. I'm sorry I mean, to say that, but you can't do that story. That's half the cat's over. That's over sixty percent of what the story was about is those characters that will never intertwine with each other, ever, because of copyright laws. Getting back into X Men, though, I do want to say something. And Yogi, I'm going to ask you the same question that I'm going to, I'm going to ask myself. Yeah, that made sense. Now, <laughs> with with the X Men, we got a couple people in chat now. Oh man. Now. <laughs> With X Men one, two, I don't even know how many there are. I stopped watching after freaking uh, Phoenix, after she freaking exploded or supposedly died. <laughs> after she saved the helicopter from the, the 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 water at the dam, that's the last one I watched because I didn't know is Wolverine part of the X Men pack part of the X Men thing. Yes. Is the new Wolverine part of the X Men thing? Yes. Because there's two Wolverine movies, right? Or is there three? There's two Wolverine movies. So, and they're both called Wolverine, correct? And then just another subtitle? And I think one's Wolverine and the other one's The Wolverine. Oh, yeah. one word, yes. The. Yes. Okay, yeah. <laughs> but anyway, those are part of the, the X-Men thing as a whole, which why aren't they doing a a one movie on Storm? Why aren't they doing a one movie on somebody else besides Wolverine? Who on? Yeah, I got metal shit in my bones. Cool. I'd rather, you know, see some boobs. Well, like yeah. Chip said, they... they and watch some chick, you know, freaking throw lightning bolts everywhere because she can <laughs> control the weather. Shit, hell yeah. Well, like, but like, like Chip said, light, they hold licensing. out the... Yeah, yeah. That's the thing. But, well, and, and you got to, you know, the, whatever they're going to do, I hope they do it quick to where they actually start intertwining somebody to try to get some of these licenses stuff, you know, these licenses back after Sony figures out that this whole remake of Spider-Man has just fell to a pile of heaping crap. No offense. It is good. It's not going <laughs> to get what it got. I, I saw you, Captain. I saw it. I saw it. You're no. getting ready to blow me up. No, no, no actually not because I've, the only Spider-Man <laughs> movie I saw was the first one. I've never, I haven't seen two, three or the reboot. I have them all on DVD, but I've never actually sat down to watch them. Um, what they did do is they recently, when uh, 
you you know about the Netflix series. I know you guys talked about it mm-hmm. last week. And th- that's when I told Obi I wanted to come on because because of your voicemail uh, challenge to your listeners. Um, <laughs> about who do you who do you think should play the various characters? Marvel had to horse trade with I, I think it's Sony. Uh, and agree to extend the Fantastic Four license in order to get Daredevil back under the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Huh. So basically, it's a trade for trade thing. Yeah, they said, "All right, you can keep, uh, you can have another five years of Fantastic Four, but we want uh, Daredevil back." I cannot wait. What did I say this last week, Yogi? When are they going to make another Daredevil movie? And a Daredevil and Carmen Electra together. Carmen Electra. Th- <laughs> Carmen Electra. Now that sounds Carmen good Electra. to me. She, Electra. Isn't she like Sorry. 60 now? Or... Shut up. Be alone. <laughs> Stop <laughs> it. All right. But Electra. Okay. Daredevil and Electra together. Did oh. that, that, that meet your criteria, sir? That's better. Thank you. <laughs> so I better. like the idea of Carmen Electra. I'm well, yeah, but she's like easier on the eyes. something years old now, dude. I mean, she's really not that easy on the eyes anymore. But that's she can me. play Daredevil's mom. Dare... <laughs> <laughs> well, would she, would she be the would she be the milf or the gilf? I mean, I'm just saying. Gilf. Gilf. <laughs> really, is that bad? I haven't seen her recently. Then that's a shame, dude. She's I missed the I missed the video she did. Go go dancer. I was like, oh, I'm in love. <laughs> and and and. Well, b- basically, and I just thought of something new, too. Um, what were we talking about? Because I just had another random thought come in my head. We're talking about the, the Daredevil. Time. Yeah. Daredevil. No, if they will make a new one and they have Electra with them, I mean, of course, they had some differences at the end of the, you know, the kind of differences. <laughs> yeah, you killed my dad, you jackass. But, you know, um, if they kind of can get together to where they can do things together, that would be kind of cool and then maybe separate into their own thing. To where they're where the movie's actually tracking both of them, you know, where it would flop scenes back and forth, uh, and not necessarily them together, maybe, or even just make a Daredevil two and make an Electra one. I don't care. Well, the Daredevil movie is not because it wasn't done by Marvel Studios is not part of the cinematic universe. The television series on net Netflix will be an entire reboot, and what it is is. There's four series coming from Netflix in 2015. You have Daredevil, you have Luke Cage, Power Man, Jessica Jones, and I was for an Iron Fist. And after uh, the all four series air, then they're going to do uh, a six episode Defenders miniseries. Oh. Now we're talking mm, with a, nice. of all these characters together. And, and it's basically the, the the group of the the show the the shows are grouped under Hell's Kitchen, and that we talked about that I think on last week's B team. Um, so these are are all coming in summer two thousand fifteen. So yeah, you're I I I heard your wish for Daredevil two and a resolution of the, that storyline. Yeah, it's not coming. Unfortunately, <laughs> I say thank God because I didn't really, I wasn't sold at Ben Affleck as uh, Daredevil. Uh-huh. Well, not even Ben Affleck, even if they, no, 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 hold on. I'm not talking about Ben Affleck. Really, truthfully, he sucked in that movie. He, they could have picked somebody better for the job. Okay. I'm saying, I am, I will say that. Yes. Was the movie good? Was the movie great? Do I own it? Yes, I do. <laughs> Sorry. But I think I own it too. Even if they were going to do a remake and start from scratch, then they need to make if they're going to make it to where it's under the Marvel, uh, Mar- Marvel Shield that I call you know under the mm-hmm. Marvel roof, then they need to start over. And if they're going to do it, they need to get the right actors for the right. I mean, yes, Ben Affleck, he did a good job. He's a professional actor. Mm-hmm. Whatever. For that movie, no. For Flyboy or whatever he did with the Air Force, that movie, perfect. Daredevil, no. Sorry, it's just not gonna happen. They need to find somebody that's actually gonna be a better Daredevil, better and sell the actually the because it's a it's a new it's a basically a fresh remake. I mm-hmm. like your hat, Chip. Oh, thank you. <laughs> All I see is eyes looking at me like. Eh. But if they do that, I I really think that it'll go over really 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 well. 
we we posed the same question on Agents of Shield cast a couple of weeks ago. Uh, pick pick your actors for them, and my wife actually uh, gave me a list. <laughs> nice. Now, before you get into that, Chip, I want to yeah. ask you real quick. I want to refresh me on comic lore, so we have a okay. little more background on what they may be doing with the MC, with a uh, new Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay. Right? Defenders, weren't they? I had a few of those comics, but I was really big mm-hmm. on Avengers, Avengers East, and you know how they split off. Wasn't Ave- uh, Defenders like spun off of Avengers East Coast? No, the they Avengers. Didn't... The original Defenders were Namor, Doctor Strange, the Hulk, and maybe Ghost Rider. I know he was a member at one point. Oh, right. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they were the non-team. They weren't a team that was actually together. Um, by the end of the by the end of the original series, you had Hellcat and Night Hawk in there. Um, it, it was always an interesting book. Um, well, they were like but, a, a feeder team. Like they got people from other teams and, and whatnot, and they were kind of yeah. like dysfunctional in a way, right? Yeah, they were. They were the team. They were a team that wasn't really together, but they kind of hung out and helped each other out from time to time. So there was no like true roster, I guess is the best way to put it. Um, I don't know what the current Defenders lineup is in the Marvel. I know they've uh, rebooted the book uh, in the last year or two. And it is available as part of Marvel Unlimited. Um, <laughs> and one of the ones I'm looking forward to reading. But um, Chip, Chip, you know what you need to do? You need to become an affiliate marketer. For I, I've already... We we want sponsorship on H- Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. cast. We want our Marvel Unlimited... Uh, hey, Dude, I'll, I'll help you out with that, hey, man. Yeah. We'll, we'll hey. talk about that off air. But, you but... too. <laughs> Get some free hook swag. A bro- hook a brother or brothers yeah. up. I, I would be happy to throw a tag on every Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. cast for uh, some uh, Marvel Unlimited subscriptions. But um, so I, I, don't, I don't know what the, the actual defenders in the comic book these days are. It doesn't sound to me like it's Luke Cage and Daredevil. But um, it, it, it's, you know, th- this is the next you know part of the next phase all of these uh television series you know they're talking that agent carter will be getting her own marvel uh television series in the next year or two um the the hell's kitchen stuff it's all going to feed in and be interconnected with all of the movies um And, you know, you ask, well, how long before they start telling the same stories? Well, I think you're always going to have some type of origin story. Um, So, I mean, does that mean they're telling the same thing over? Well, sort of. It's an origin story. But, um, I mean, there's just so many characters. And, you know, the the list of possible... Uh, Marvel characters that are going, you know, there's talk that there could be a Black Panther movie. There's talk of Ms. Marvel getting her own uh, movie. Um, oh, yeah. Uh, Scarlett Johansson is very close to doing a Black Widow movie in the near future. Oh, my so, God. That's going to be awesome. It's going to have to be she's the perfect person for it, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, d- no, really? <laughs> She's gonna have it. She's gonna have it to where, yeah, she's gonna have preg. She's gonna get preg. She's already preg. She's gonna have the baby in the movie, and they're gonna be little spiderlings. It's gonna ear alive near the end. The baby's gonna be a mini superhero. <laughs> so, and then Let's you know, going. <laughs> Agents of Shield cast is supposed to be the the television series that knits together and crosses with all these various movies. If it makes it past the uh, the first season and or the second season, I think it will. I mean, if Arrow is is still doing well, then <laughs> well, and and two Arrow is not really. I mean, it is it is doing well, but it's really not known yet. Actually, there's a lot of people. I mean, even though it's gone through two seasons, I see you, Cap. But I even though it's gone through two seasons, it's really really not known. There's a lot of people that I talk to just down the street. Hey, do you watch Arrow? What's that? They don't really advertise it a lot. It's not really on a... What channel is it on? 
CW. I mean, it's not even on a mainstream channel. You know, well, TNT, uh, TBS, you know, all the, you know, the mainstream, you know, you know, uh, the sci-fi, the TNT, the, you know, the, uh, any of the mainstream channels on cable. It's not even on one of those. Well, Hell, CW, you can't even get CW on, in freaking AT&T. CW has uh, a lot of, like, fantasy, superhero type things on, on their on Vampire their Diaries. Supernatural. The, Supernatural. The originals. Yeah, but- but with yeah. Vampire Diary, Originals is not even that hype. When <laughs> Vampire Diaries came out, and I'm going to tell you this because I do watch all of these. When Vampire Diaries came out, okay, my wife got onto it along with all her friends. Everywhere I turned, people were watching Vampire Diaries, and I finally said, okay, I'll try it. I watched it. One of my other buddies watched it. One of my other buddies, his wife made him watch it. And we all knew it. We all knew what was going on. Well, and there's a lot of hot chicks. <laughs> a lot of naked hot chicks, too. Yes, that's well, then, why I watched it. And then, of course, when you had Klaus and you had his brothers and his sisters and the whole, uh, the original family, and then after they've just downplayed freaking uh, Vampire Diaries to crap, it's okay, we're just going to make a movie about the originals. Unless I'm getting three different shows mixed up right now. I might be. Because um, I watched True Blood, too. <laughs> um, but if you, you know, then you have the originals right here that all they're doing is talking and doing things about what they did or, you know, about past occurrences or what they're doing in the future as them, not even the show. It's really boring to me anyway. Yeah, we watched uh, Vampire Diaries for a season or two and then just kind of lost interest. <laughs> well, and it was, well, since Elena got became a vampire, it was just... That's where the show kind of got interesting, mm-hmm. but then it kind of didn't because you know for a fact she was she wears her her heart on her sleeve. She wants to make sure she protects everybody, and then all of a sudden she's a vampire now that can turn off her emotions. Oh yeah, let's have some fun. <laughs> and it takes an act of God from hmm, which one is it? One of the 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 mean brother anyway uh, to get. To get her to turn her emotions back on for a little bit to actually think, and it's just, it's just overplayed. They need to get get it done. Put those actors in a different freaking movie. You know, anyway, Dawson's Creek didn't work out well, so he had to play this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I couldn't help it. I, you you knew it was coming. Come on. Well, what do we got else here? Well, uh, let's see. I think Chip wanted Captain. to share the. Yeah, I think Chip wanted to share his uh, wife's uh, suggestions for casting. Oh, yeah, all right. Uh, it, it's basically, you know, this is one of the questions you asked last week, and I had this list uh, handy here. For Daredevil, she was thinking uh, Jason Doring. Doesn't ring a bell. Who's that? Uh, I believe he was the guy in the in Veronica Mars. Did you guys ever watch that show? I did. The only yes. person I really remember is Kristen Bell because she's cutie. Okay, well, you know the rich uh, high school dude that, A, first was a dick, and then uh, she started uh, screwing on the show? Um, oh, yep. the dude with the punchable right. face. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, she was, she was cheating on, on me with him. It's not good. Yeah, hooker. Okay. <laughs> uh, let's see. Shane West from uh, Nikita and Once and Again. Yeah. Uh, for Jessica Jones, she thought uh, Cassidy Freeman from Smallville. Tess. That that could work. Hmm. Maybe. Luke Cage. Uh, Billy Brown from Hostages and Sons of Anarchy. I guess he was in Dexter and the following. Okay. Well, how about I got a I got one that's good for that. You know who I like like as an actor, and he's a really cool dude. If you ever get to meet him. Uh, what's his name? Uh, Christopher Judge, I believe his name is. The guy that played uh, uh, the freaking uh, go. Uh, not the he was a, was he a gold? But he was the the, the big brawly black dude from uh, SG One. That was said indeed. That was his thing. No SG One fans out there. Okay, not feeling the love. Moving on. All right, <laughs> and then uh, she put down Iron Fist, Ryan. Quantin from True Blood. Yeah, who's, who's that, I really can't see. I really who's can't Ryan Quantin on on True Blood? 
I really can't see it. But... The only people I know on on uh, True Blood are Anna Paquin and uh, Eric Skarsgård. Um. Uh, see, this is where this is why I hate watching so many different vampire shows at once, because then I start mixing them up. Like I was explaining something to my wife's friend the other day on Vampire Diaries, and I started explaining something about the originals, and my wife's like, no, 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 wrong show. I'm like, wait, what? You explain it. <laughs> or even I was talking about True Blood, but I was talking about Elena and mm. uh, and Stefan and from Vampire Diaries. Anyway. And then the, the other idea we had was Jason Hartley as Iron Fist. <laughs> Jeez. That's that's possible, maybe, <laughs> maybe. Well, <laughs> so, well, think about. I mean, hey, he played Arrow. He's bl- he's blonde hair. He's the right build, the right age. He'd make a good Danny Rand. Yeah, like I said, it's possible. Even with his with his work doing the Arrow, having to do some of those other stuff, I think a a big smasher would be uh, in his uh, forte. And right. let's throw in ahead. Jeff Goldblum into the hat for any one of those rows. Let's bring him out of the dead. Resurrect them. Just kidding, guys. By the way, one person said, uh, they, thank you. Uh, there's one SG fan, one Stargate fan in the, in the mix. And, uh, yeah, Christopher Judge played uh, Teal'c. Uh, oh, okay. The alien, awesome alien dude. Okay, go on, Chip. Just wanted to make I'm, sure we got some Stargate yeah. love. <laughs> and that's all I got for the list. And I think uh, you mentioned uh, Skarsgård from uh, True Blood. Now, that was that uh, the king vampire? He was uh, king, and then he got dethroned. And uh, then uh, Bill became the king. And then uh, okay. he, he became, then Skarsgård became, Skarsgård's, Skarsgård's character became the sheriff. Okay. See, I think uh, Skarsgård could either play Iron Fist or Daredevil. Yeah, that I is would a good, definitely that's go for a good that. choice. Because I liked him in um, outside of True Blood, I liked him in uh, Battlefield, uh, Battleship, rather. Did you guys see that? No, I haven't seen it yet. Dude, if you like Pacific Rim, uh, watch, I know. watch Battleship. Watch Battleship. Battleship was awesome. Same kind of like really epic, no real plot, but really fun movie to watch. <laughs> Turn off There's the brain. There's a lot brain. of explosions. explosions. Those are those that kind of movie right there is what you call a dumb man's movie. You just watch it. Ooh, fire! It's <laughs> uh. like I said before. It's a feast for the senses. You know, there's nothing wrong with that. As if if it's you know, it is like what it is. Those, I guess you could say one of those Bubba J people just drinking beer and watching NASCAR after this movie. <laughs> uh, does this book have pictures? Okay, cool. <laughs> that kind of thing. <laughs> so uh let, let's talk more about the movies that are coming up <laughs> my man so captain yeah. america winter soldier we we finally seen a lot more than the usual teasers the pr- previous trailers were just teasers there wasn't much substance to that but we finally got to see more of the falcon you know and they, they did a high-tech version of him i, I know chip you're I, I i i don't know i'm kind of in between i kind of feel the way you do but i also kind of like the new look but uh, not having the traditional red outfit, and then his bird is nowhere to be found. Um, but you know, they're kind of trying to adapt the, uh, you know, all the properties to a wider audience. You know, I think the new outfit works, and they explain why it is the way it is. You know, it it was it's a reasonable explanation. He's a member of a paratrooper, uh, battalion. All right, so at least they explain it. This don't just uh, mm-hmm. drop it on us and hope we'll just accept it for what it is. <laughs> but yeah, this movie looks good, man. I don't know. I'm have to. Mm-hmm. It's expensive for us to go out to the movies because we have a huge household, so we might wait um, till it goes to the dollar theater. Which is I, just $2. Wanna, <laughs> I just want to. I just want to say that uh, I know a couple of guys at the at the radio station in town here. Oh. So more than likely, I'm going to get to see this movie in full IMAX. So, oh. yeah, I love you guys, too. Um, <laughs> well, I will be there opening weekend in IMAX, and my asshole uh, co-host tonight blew off the show because he had pr- uh, press passes to go see the movie tonight. 
and I hate him for it. Oh, wait a minute. What co-host is name? I is believe he's referring to again? Fred Rojas, aka Fred Spider's Ro- Venom. Yes, the oh, Wii U oh my. lover. Fred. <laughs> okay, let me make sure I say this name right. Fred Rojas. Correct. Yes. Okay. So I don't, because I don't want to. I no disrespect. I don't want to mess anybody's name up. Fred Rojas, you are the. This is from your co-host, by the way, not me. You are the <laughs> biggest ass in the world. What the hell? <laughs> Okay, we're done. Yeah, yeah. I hope well, you enjoyed the fucking. I, movie. I heard he was tweeting during the movie too, letting you know how good it was. Oh, that's even worse. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I made it up. <laughs> I'll just play it. <laughs> Fred, Fred would never do that. He's a cool dude. No. And Fred, if he, you listen to this, I'm not being mean, dude. Trust me. <laughs> Don't come over to my house and beat me up or anything. I'm a little guy. <laughs> yeah. He, we've already said he is banned from talking about uh, the movie until after uh, we have all seen it. Mm, he, he can't even mention it next week. <laughs> yeah, you don't want to come, know how I'm he, gonna... how much he liked it because I mean, nope. whether he loved it or hated it, either nope. way, it'd be bad. Because I got to see it no matter what, because we, we'll be talking about it on Agents of Shield cast at some point. Yep. Over you were gonna say something? Nope, I'm not. <laughs> I don't want to say it's the wrong thing, and then I get a freaking Skype call or an email, and this guy saying, "What'd you say about me, punk? I'm about to whoop your ass." <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> sir. Please don't beat me up. Or I could go. Sorry, guy. I didn't know what I was doing. They just make him feel you might turn him on, thing. you know. I might, <laughs> might turn him on. Like, wait, how old are you, little girl? <clears throat> old enough to know. <clears throat> anyway, let's get going. I was gonna make an inappropriate spike. comment about grass on the field, but I'm gonna leave that one. Alone. Yeah, you probably yeah, did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, you're probably not when I want to do that one. I got a pretty inappropriate comment too, but so so uh, so yeah. <laughs> This is funny. Uh, they've waited. This movie's about to release, and they, they waited so long to really release the trailer that r- really mm. sells the movie. The other trailers were good, but you know this one really was like, "Holy crap! I got to see this now." They you really, know? they really should have released that at least a month ago, uh, or you know, at least six weeks ago, because then it would just get that people that much more hype talking about it. Problem is, what was happening six months ago? Or no, I'm sorry, six weeks ago. Wasn't there another big release coming out? I don't think so, as far as uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe is concerned. It wasn't, okay, that wasn't no, Marvel. November Cinematic. was Thor. Okay, and so even even Thor, they should have put it out in January. Thor is done in November. Let it have a month to get its hype on, because that's really all it lasts anyways is a month. It's four to six weeks is it's all it lasts, the second week of January, you put out this cinematic, get people hyped for it, and then all of a sudden it comes out in March, and they're like, oh, yeah, it's finally here, yeah. And then you got every theater in the United States is sold out in every seat. Well, what they, th- I think they've done a great job with it because they had a, a trailer during Thor, or, you know, before Thor. They did one in either December and or January. They've had a new trailer almost every month since November. Okay, well, I, maybe I just haven't seen them, or I've, I haven't I distinguished them as being different because it's basically at, the same thing. At this point, I think I've seen the entire movie via trailers. <laughs> yeah. If you can piece those together yeah. and you know, nope. uh, movie maker those babies and put them together, I would love to watch that movie. Well, we talked. You know, we talked about this over at Ages of Shield cast, uh, Chip. That this movie definitely is going to set up some interesting things in just in the within the world of Shield. Because there's obviously going to be some tension there uh, with everything that's going on. And they've hinted at that. The last trailer definitely hinted at that really hard that Captain America is going to have a falling out because of his morals or whatever. And uh, him and Falcon are going to be, you know, basically on their own against all odds. And, you know, the whole line they have is like, how do we know, uh, you know, who, who the enemies are, who the bad guys are, that whoever's shooting at us. <laughs> it's like, OK, thanks, well, Captain my- America. That's clear. But my question to you both is, okay, now, and I haven't been reading the comics or reading up on like I'm supposed to. Yes, I'm the bad, worst host in the world. Why does he have to go bad? 
I mean, is it just his time to be done? I mean, is that what happened in the comics? I mean, oh, I guess I'm not the only one that doesn't read comics and that doesn't do anything like this. So explain it to the rest of the stream and the listeners why he goes bad or why he necessarily it's just he's gone. He's he's not going to be he's he, what well, he dies off, doesn't he? Well, right. Before Chip tackles this one, also, as uh, I thought it was an interesting tidbit that uh, Chip and uh, Andy let us in on on their show. The fact that Chris Evans has indicated that he can't wait to get out of the role. So there's no chance that he's going to sign on for more movies. So we know that the Captain America as we know it in the MCU is going to be gone somehow. So, But but I'm saying how far in the – and I understand that. But this is my next, you know, a little added. How far in the comics do we get before they kill him off? I mean, do we get through all of them? Well, we in a know short that time or what? we know that he's con- that Chris Evans is contracted for two movies. So as far as the Marvel Cinematic Universe <clears throat> go, there's two more movies, I believe. He already got four out of the six that he's contracted right. for done. Mm-hmm. So, Chip, what what are your what are your thoughts on all that? Um. Okay, so I think <laughs> it's a loaded question. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, I mean. Th- I know ca- the Captain America movie is pretty much the lead in to Avengers. So, I mean, uh, and then we know Avengers 2 is Age of Ultron. So that storyline's already take uh, all, already set up. I, I don't know if they uh, were. So that would only leave him with two more movies. So what do you do? Do you uh, do a another run of movies without a Captain America three? Do Avengers three, which could be Civil War. Although how you're going to do that without the X Men and Spider Man, especially Spider Man uh, and the Fantastic Four, um, and then kill Cap off in Captain America three. Maybe I mean I, I'm not exactly you know by that by the end of the you know they will have a whole new slate of movies uh, besides Ant Man coming after Avengers two uh, we just don't know which ones yet uh, but I, I don't know where you kill him off and I mean do you have someone replace Chris Evans uh, as Steve Rogers? before you bring in the Bucky thing in, I don't know, Captain America 4. Um, I don't know how you go about... Um, they, they have a lot of logistics to figure out, I think. Because I don't think you can kill Captain America off until at least another Avengers movie. And then replace him. That's a very good point. By the way, uh, shout out to SG, a.k.a. Uh, R9Cast joining us and by the way uh, definitely as far as production value and and just everything but production value community engagement sg and bridget they do an awesome job make sure you catch them on sunday nights or sunday evenings depending how you look at it they do a great show and they really involve the community and also sg's very supportive of his fellow podcasters he's a he's a man for all men a man for all men or something What's the he's, name of the podcast? It's uh, R9 Cast. R9 Cast, yep. <clears throat> yeah, he he's a he, we see him a lot of times in the chat over at the B team. <clears throat> what time? Uh, all games. He never misses a beat. I mean, yeah. he's on it. Him, him, yep. Tim Curtis. Uh, there's a few others, but uh, there's some, there's just a few people that are like they that's like all about it, man. <clears throat> all right, I'm gonna give you R9 Cast. Welcome. I'm gonna give you my patented intro, and this is for you to record if you want to. What time is his show? Uh, what time is it, Chip? Is it uh, it's, well, let's see, Knuckleball is at nine, so it's R nine cast is at seven, seven, 7 p.m. Eastern. Okay, type in uh, Yogi. While we're doing this, we're doing this, and we I'm gonna get ready for it. I'm gonna hook this guy up right now. Uh, anybody else that wants it, I love to do this kind of stuff. Type in the chat, uh, the horseplay show notes, the names, the day, the time, and I'm gonna hook him up. Just watch. You're gonna like it for there those that are. Those that are just listening in the podcast, um, of course, you guys have heard me do it today. I love doing it. Kind of a, a voiceover type thing. So, without further ado.
R9 cast, 7 p.m. Eastern presents at allgames.com with SG and Bridget. What is it again? Just playing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna hook you up, man. Let me know if you ever want anything sometime, and uh, we'll actually I'll give you a voiceover set. <laughs> for that well, fun, fact about about here, S- fun fact about right SG thing. fun fact about SG he's he's really sick with the beats so maybe mm. one day uh, if we need some intro music he might hook he's us up beaten. We'll cross I want a remix other. of me doing that that's he's, what I want you know I, t- I tell you what I, oh, as far as the all game podcasts go uh, B Team G- Gaming History 101 and R9 Cast has some of the coolest uh, opening music oh, or, original night. original intros uh, Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern Time. R9 Cast presents on allgames.com with EZG. What? How do you say it again? SG. SG. It's supposed to, it's supposed to be his initials. SG. Oh, got it. So with SG and Bridget. <laughs> Bridget B. Got it. You know what? I'll write it all out and get it all set. Oh, Obi, Obi. They're trying to say you're using auto tune. Auto tune? I'm not using auto tune. <laughs> <laughs> especially when I can sit here and talk to you in my camera and I'm looking right at you right now. So I hope you're watching. Okay. When I can sit here, hands up, no feet. I mean, I'll even put my feet up and then sit there and go, you want to play? Yes. That is not, that is me all day long. Peace. Word to your mama. <laughs> <laughs> Don't believe the hype. You guys go check our, our nine cast out. It is 7 PM Eastern time. Sunday evenings on allgames.com with <laughs> SSG and Bridget B. Fail. I know, dude. That's like a whole lot of fail right there. Was that a cue all for right. me? I don't know. I don't it know was, if Chip was supposed to jump you in. You didn't pick it up. But anyway, all right. One more time. I got to try again. I got to try again. Ready? Okay. Here we go. Sunday night, 7 p.m. Eastern time. R9 cast presents on allgames.com with damn it i forgot again <laughs> i'm done i'm done i'm done it's getting old now and i'm getting mad at myself <laughs> sg i said it right this time too i just forgot again you know what it is you need to watch some know, of the old I write a script no, you used to need to watch some of the old commercials they used to have, but I remember they used to do Sunday, 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 Monster Wheel, Monster Truck, Carnage. Oh, yeah, yeah. You really should do that. Sunday, Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Time, R9 Cast presents on allgames.com with SG and Bridget B. Come now, get it. There you also, go. Yeah. yeah SG, I hope, I hope you, uh, you caught a snippet <laughs> of that. I'll do it again for you, you man, have, if you want to record you it. Have, you have to highlight that part for him. And then we'll I will link definitely. It to I'll hide it. <laughs> I'll highlight it for him. And don't delete your recorded videos. I, I hate when I bookmark to them, and then I pimp it out, and then they're gone. What? Were you, what? I'm trying to send you some traffic on your channel on Twitch. And then I, I, I bookmark and hi, I highlight your stuff, and then you delete the source material. It says, oh, this recorded video has been deleted. You, you saved forever. Deleted. You have unlimited storage on Twitch TV. I, I haven't deleted any of them. Don't I don't me, want to talk about it Don't anymore. make me do my Captain crazy Chaos. cow eyes. Captain Chaos, you ain't got to do that. You already do that every time you look at me. But Captain Chaos is going to fall asleep right now. He's, his room's dark behind him. He's like, Fuck, guys, yeah. I'm going home. I'm going to sleep. So I was looking for the... It's like, okay, where's my Wemo app to turn the light on? <laughs> Apparently, I don't have it on my iPad. His wife's doing the classic turning yeah. the lights off uh, hint. Like, come on, honey. Time to come to bed. <laughs> no, Clamp it's programmed on. to go off at one. Oh, uh, see. Now you just completely do. No, that's, that's still the wife's hint. Hey, it's yeah. one o'clock, dude. Go to yeah. bed. <laughs> Ages of Ultron is very intriguing, I think. What do you guys think about Age of Ultron? Ultron. I can't wait. I Well... I can't wait, but at the same time, I'm very, uh, I have my doubts because I think they're trying to do way too much in one movie. Mm-hmm. Um, they're introducing Ultron, so you got to tell his origin. They're introducing Quicksilver. They're introducing the Scarlet Witch. They're introducing the Vision. 
Uh, there's rumors of Ms. Marvel. Mm-hmm. Uh, and you already have the original four or five Avengers. Uh, and so I'm not, I'm just not sure how all of this, how can you tell any of these stories uh, with any depth uh, in a three hour movie? Hmm. It seems like, it seems like they're overreaching. But at the same time, I can't wait to see it to see how see if they can pull this off. Well, now, and, and if they can pull this off, are are we looking at maybe not even um, a totally different, total dis- different direction with a, a part two or three, or is this could this not be a drawn out series of movies? Well, I mean that what they said in uh, the Marvel special that was on the other night is one of the things about the Avengers is the lineup is always very fluid. So, you know, Chris Evans could be done after Avengers 2 and be replaced by Hercules or the Scarlet Witch or, you know, whoever. Uh, Maybe they bring Wonder Man in. Um, So they, you know, these movies can go on forever. Iron Man doesn't always have to be an Avenger. Right. Well, that's true, and he he wasn't always an Avenger either. So, uh, next going on, um, you guys that were that read a lot of comic books. I know Captain Chaos. You did a lot. Yogi, you read your fair share. Um, the Guardians of the Galaxy. Does that make you want to go back to the comics? Does that make you guys want to like get back into them and 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 and, and hopefully, uh, yeah. Just does it make you guys want to go back to comics and and start reading them again or read them over or anything like that? Yogi. I am curious. I, I had some dealings with the Guardians of the Galaxy, and, I, and apparently they go back further than I realized. They go back to the 60s, and they've had, like, two main teams, two main lineups. And they were recently rebooted in the comic book world, I believe, like, back in 2005 or so, if I'm not mistaken. I think it was late four. But, yeah, so it's it's an interesting mythos they've kind of developed within that world, and it's interesting that there's overlap with what we've come to know as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. So seeing this movie popped up, pop up, it, it kind of caught me off guard. But if there's anything that sells me on it, other than you know Vin Diesel being the voice of Groot, which I think is hilarious. It is, <laughs> and, yeah. Oh, yeah. And then also Batista being uh, playing uh, Drax, the Destroyer, the... He's a really diesel dude. I mean, that dude is pretty buff. It's he's scary, but uh, yeah, you got him. But the most important part is Karen Gillan mm-hmm. as Nebula, shaved head or not. She's she's oh, she's easy on the eyes. Let's just say that. <sighs> she's the girl from Doctor Who, by the way. She plays Amy Pond, which is why you need to at least catch some of the seasons of Doctor Who. Yeah, I I look at the when I originally heard the Guardians of the Galaxy, I said really. And then you're right. Uh, there was a previous Guardians of the Galaxy in the 70s, 80s, and 90s, and they're the ones that I know. And they are in, they are an entirely different team than the ones they rebooted uh, in to 2004, 2005. Uh, I was interested. I was I had some interest when I heard they were doing the movie. When I saw that it was these aren't the Guardians I knew. Um, I kind of lost interest. And then when I watched the trailer they released in February, it's like, uh, take my money now. I want to be uh, first in line for that movie because it looks absolutely incredible. It's going to be, um, I think it's going to be a little light, more, a little more lighthearted than some of the mo- the Marvel movies up to now. Um I think they're going to have fun with it, and I think they're going to tell a spectacular story with incredible effects, and uh, I just can't wait, even if I don't know who the characters are. But I will be reading all those books before the movie comes out. I'm very curious. It didn't at, at the end of Thor, the Dark World, I forgot what I was watching, but they had a, a cut scene at the end where like, they're talking about uh, they came for... They left one of the... Was it one of the gems? The Infinity Gems with Infinity the Collector. Gems? Yeah. Yep. 
and that was kind of a tie into Guardians of the Galaxy, yep. wasn't it? So that I was that really was a great way to intrigue people and ease them into that world because I know most people are coming into it blind. Like, what the hell's going on? I feel like such a noob. <laughs> I love those post credits. Almost <laughs> all of those post credit scenes because there's always some huge reveal, whether it be the the Cosmic Cube, uh, the Avengers announcement. Uh, seeing the collector for the first time, it was like, holy shit. Uh, yeah. They're always, uh, they're, sometimes they're even better than the actual movie. <laughs> well, just to uh, kind of get, I have, there's a lot of people right now that's actually saying, I've never, I've never heard of Garden Galaxy. Mm -hmm. There is a link right now for you guys that are actually watching live. Um, I don't know what you guys think about it, but I have it pulled up on YouTube here. Do you guys mind if I show it real quick to the, to the, to everybody actually watching live for a second, or is that you know something we don't really want? Go to? for it, Yogi. You cool with that, buddy? Go for it. I think I will take that uh, that bio break now. You're gonna take that yep. bio break now? Me too. Yogi, that's, <laughs> sounds good. Okay. And well, turn they, on the uh, light. Why, why? Yes, turn on the light, please. We don't want you peeing on your shoes. Uh, why they are taking a, a, a few second bio break, guys? We're gonna get right into this little. It's a it's a trailer from uh, world premiere of First Guardians of the Galaxy. Um, I'm I'm setting it up right now as a a window slot. So you guys enjoy the trailer. We are gonna watch it. We are gonna have sound, of course, um, as always. Got to have sound. Uh, so we'll set that up, and we're just gonna put it right over top of everybody. And uh, for those that are actually listening on the podcast, again, this is the Guardians of the Galaxy. Here's the trailer, guys. I hope you guys enjoy it. This is actually Batista. All right. But that right there, guys, the Guardians of the Galaxy comes out one I'm sorry, eight one two thousand fourteen. Um I can't wait the fresh specially. Uh, but you guys there is a sneak peek uh right here on horseplay. Um uh, you guys have seen the trailers, I'm sure. Captain Chaos, Yogi. Yes, his lights are back on. What do you guys think? What do you guys think? How's it gonna be? Any more uh, any more thoughts? And like Chip said, uh, it looks like it's going to be very lighthearted. Um, but at the same time, it's going to give us some more backstory into some of the, the events that will lead up to the Infinity Wars and all that stuff, Infinity Gauntlet. Um, which, you know, 
between that whole story arc, those those story arcs, and and then also you know he's Ultron. Got... <laughs> he's <laughs> got the wreck. This the car stealing raccoon. Yeah, he's got the rocket red t- raccoon. Yeah, nice. <laughs> Bastage. But yeah, they 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 they're setting the stage for some really epic things. So it's gonna be it's gonna be crazy. I mean, even like uh, like if you just look at like Loki, the whole Loki business within you know Thor, the Thor movies, mm-hmm. you know you can't get rid of that guy. They keep finding a way to bring him back and make him even more interesting. So I, I think about how, what they've done with Loki alone, and then Ultron in the in the comics was rebuilt like I don't know twenty, thirty different times, something ridiculous. And you know he he could transfer his, his beam into other things, and and he builds his own. He could build his own little minions and everything and, and uh, you know, basically spread his, his consciousness into anything electronic or whatever. So you can never right. really kill him, I guess. Right. Well, yeah, but you got to remember Ultron went through a bunch of different fights with, you know, Ultron versus the Avengers, Ultron versus the Hulk, Ultron versus Iron Man, Brainiac. You know, just Ultron with the you know, Avengers 2. I mean, there's just so many things that he's been in. He's got to die sometime. Sorry. <laughs> I mean, really, he's 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 around. He's going to be around. That's just how it is. Yes, yeah, so it's going to make to it. it's gonna make things very interesting for sure. Mm-hmm. And I mean, yeah. I'm really stoked about seeing Vision come into the fray because I always thought he was kind of a neat character. Um, I loved playing, um, you know, uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. The the yeah. first one, the second one I heard was kind of a stinker and I kind of skipped it, but I love the system in that game and just the fact that they just indulge you like you're all the characters they throw into that game. Mm-hmm. I mean, if there's anything that gets you excited about the Marvel universe, playing that game, and then I see you know all the stuff they're coming out with in that on actual big screen, I'm like, dude. By the way, uh, Pork Chop loves uh, your uh, your fluffy animal. <laughs> That uh, Poor I got Trump those. Loves your fluffy. I got those at Comic Con last year. They had a thousand of them. I got nine ninety eight and nine ninety nine. Whoa, it's <laughs> a lot. <laughs> I, I thought about getting the last one just to screw the guy uh, behind me out of one, but uh, I was nice. But, and, and really, the, we had a really big feature planned. But we've gone so f- we went so fast through this thing. The feature notes are done, so I don't know what we want to say. But I do want to. There is one thing I want to say right now before I, we can do anything else, guys. For all the people that are showing everybody here love, for the love of God, see this number above my head. If you guys are listening, you can't watch and you can't see the live cast or the show. There's a number. It says voicemail above my head in white letters. The only white letters on the screen except for Captain Chaos. (laughs) 206-415-4987. That number again, 206-415-4987. You guys got to leave us a voicemail. We will play those voicemails on air, on live, on this show. Yogi, how we have what? One or two voicemails this week is all? Yeah, I think we'll just play them uh, next week. Well, we're going okay. to pile up, so we'll have lots of fun with them. <laughs> okay. So what we are going to do, since nobody called, I don't even think I called this week. I'm so terrible. And and Captain Chaos, I implore you to join in on the fun. R9 cast, YouTube, Pork Chops, anybody and everybody that's in here or listening, call us. 206-415-4987. Tell us what you think. Even if it's something, hey, Obi, Yogi, what's going on? That's it. That We're fine with that. We still want to play that on everything we got. So that being said, Yogi, what do we got going on next, man? Well, actually, we before some... we, I, I figured before we close off this, the segment, I, I want to see if Chip had anything else to add in regards uh, to the uh, MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, no, I think we did a pretty good job of covering it. I mean, you know, this is something if um, if Marvel I, – I, I think it's going to be interesting to see what happens with – Marvel's Agents of Shield. Um, I think it's it's a huge cog in their plan, and right now, uh, while it is starting to gain a following, and everybody says it's getting better, 
I'm kind of concerned that it may be too little too late. Mm. Um, I hope not. I, I hope not either because the series, uh, you know, the the first six, seven episodes uh, were very sporadic. And then you throw in this god-awful uh, scheduling that they've done uh, <laughs> since January. Yeah. Do, try doing a uh, podcast about one specific television show where it keeps going uh, on hiatus for a month at a time. It sucks. Um, but you guys do a good job. I mean, you always make it interesting. <laughs> we find, so, far, so far, we've been able to find uh, something to talk about every week, um, which you is never why I think just invite me on the show. I'll find something. <laughs> hey, guys, my hand's blue. <laughs> <laughs> You know, you know I want to say I want to say one thing, and and Obi, I know you watch the show too, but so let's see what you think. I think I know where Chip's at with it already, mm. but uh, I don't understand all the hate about you know all the hate towards Sky as a character. She's easy on the eyes. She's pretty interesting. She's coming in on her own. I think they're finally fleshing her out more. You know, I know at first they tried to make it too much of a strong female character, and in the end, she ended up becoming a kind of a doofus because of it, because she always had to prove how how late she was. You know, I was like, look at my super uber hacking skills. And it started getting tired. But I think now she's, she has more of a dynamic personality. Like, you know, they really rather her out more. So I don't know why, why all they hate about her. Like this, people say like her and like uh, Simmons are the worst characters on the show. And I disagree. No, no, no. With Sky, um, there's a lot of, there's a lot with Sky that, that people don't know yet. Um, there's a lot of things that the, the shield is keeping secret. Um, I don't. I don't even know. Chaos. If you know what's going on with Sky, I would love to hear it, because well, just the just the running around the bush every week and saying, "Well, we're going to tell you," or he wants to say, "Oh, hey, I want to tell you what's going on," or "Hey," and then they never happen, and then you got May being a freaking super secret bitch in the background, you know, trying <laughs> not to do anything or trying not to screw everything up, but she's a two time and whatever. And then you got people that are actually trying to do the right thing. You know, spent like with Sky. She's she's I don't yay. This is gonna be a whole nother this is a whole nother feature. Okay. Yeah. I can get off on Agents of Shield. Sorry. Well, uh in in terms of Sky, uh you know, they they always need to have a mystery going on the show. First we had the whole Colson, how'd he survive, et cetera, et cetera. Some people thought that ran a little too long. I disagree. Um you know they they're doing this mystery with Sky. Everybody's wondering who she is, and I think last on last night's show, Yogi, uh, we read the top five theories of who she's going to become. I'm going to try and do these uh, as best I can remember. Some you know there's thoughts that she could be the She Hulk because that's some type of gamma human stuff she was injected with. Uh, Spider Woman, which kind of falls within. That uh, that uh, Jessica Drew was a double double agent for Hydra and got exposed to something, et cetera, et cetera. Ms. Marvel, who uh, got her powers when she was uh, in an explosion uh, of some Cree creation uh, while being. Uh, in the in the proximity of Captain Marvel, um, Farvel, which is a character I don't even really know much about in the Marvel universe, because she was after I stopped reading, and she's somehow the daughter or genetic construct of Captain Marvel, and uh, finally, that what the one that they said it could really happen is Mantis, who is a very old. Uh, Marvel character from the 70s, mm -hmm. from the first, I don't know, 100, uh, maybe issue 120 of uh, the original Avengers series, who has some type of Cree background, is uh, has martial arts skills, as well as something else. Um, and what she'd be a low one? tech. She Hulk, Spider Woman, Farvel. Ms. Marvel and Mantis. Farvel. All right. Because I want to talk about this. I'm writing them all down. 
Yeah. So we're talking about, and then I want to get this straight here. I know we're we're basically getting into another feature, so I don't care, but we're having fun. I, you're t- we're talking about Sky, the computer <laughs> hacker chick on Agents yep. of Shield, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so the chat's going crazy right now. Well, yeah, I know, and I'm going <laughs> crazy right now. So what you're saying is, you okay? And this is what we're at with She Hawk. So it's basically a uh, incredible hawk, but a girl. Right, and so they're uh, gonna have to make her an elastic bra, so that doesn't rip off, um, which would be cool <laughs> if it does the first time. Miss Marvel, what is that exactly? Um, and then uh, Far Mar- Farvel. Farvel, that? yeah, that's the Red one Earth. I don't really know much about. And what's Miss Marvel? Miss Marvel is who now? Miss Marvel was Carol Danvers. She was a NASA scientist. She was. Uh, Involved in an explosion where she, uh, with within the close proximity of Captain Marvel, mm-hmm. uh, and somehow got uh, some of his powers. Okay, so Captain Marvel is he's. I know this is really bad, guys, and mm-hmm. I'm really sorry, but Captain Marvel, he's he's like a. Uh, explain. He was a Kree super soldier, I guess is the best way to put it. Mm-hmm. Um, so kind of like, kind of like uh, the Avenger, uh, kind of like Captain America. Then, so he's uh, Captain- no, he could fly. He had some type of, I think he had some type of force beam or something out of his hands. Oh, so it was a supernatural yeah. superhero. Okay, yeah, because yeah, he's an alien, so. Aliens are cooler than human yep. beings. <laughs> Super strength, et cetera, Ooh. et cetera. I got one, guys. Now, the to anybody, if you guys can all guess it, you can. The next question I want to ask you about, Captain, since you're here, I know mm-hmm. we, we're going to have to shut down here soon, but I don't really want to. The Green Hornet. The Green Hornet. Not the Green Hornet. The Green Lantern. What is he, Green Hornet? That's DC. That's DC. Yeah. Greenland. Oh man, try, come on. Why, why try to make worlds collide? Because it's fun. <laughs> but I gotta say, St- Stan Farina, he just said that Miss Marvel would require a larger bra, bra cup. Oh, no, yeah. No, no, not even a larger bra cup. It has to be expandable, kind of like um, the with the uh, the Fantastic Four, where he can expand and stretch. They She, she has to have one of those, or she's gonna be showing boobs every time. Well, and I hope she changes be, all. Well, he's saying because, uh, you know. Sky is really well endowed in that area, you know. So and Ms. Marvel well, is like, she will Pow! be after that. Boom. Yeah, and Ms. Marvel, is, I mean, is statuesque. I always think of uh, the blonde Cylon should play her, but everybody wants oh. Katie Sackoff to play her. No, I like Katie. Wanna... I like Katie Sackoff, but she played a uh, Starbuck on uh, yeah. Battle Battlestar uh, Galactica. Battle Star. Right. So, but I, I liked uh, five. Nice I think too. I think five would be a better fit. My next uh, question now. Hollywood, yeah. Number three, you said Spider Woman, basically, yeah. right? Yeah. How would she get that uh, basically? Because you know, Spider Man, he got the venom from a spider bite, from a radioactive spider, correct? Sp- spider Woman was injected with something uh, while with Hydra, I believe. There's also been talk that some of her abilities came from an encounter with the High Evolutionary, who could be the clairvoyant. Hmm. Okay. Then the fourth is Mantis. So basically, she would turn into like a a praying mantis type character. No, I mean, I mean, if you uh, Google or check the Marvel wiki for Mantis, uh, both are uh, characters that came from China because that's where Sky was found. Mm -hmm. Um, And I believe uh, she uh, both. You know, nobody knows who her parents are. They're saying that Mantis's parents were of Cree origin and uh, like i said it was actually before i actually started reading marvel so i don't really know the that much about her but she had martial arts powers i mean they they were all low tech or low special effect powers that they could uh certainly pull off pretty easy right and then uh she hulk because uh the she hulk works pretty easy on the origin end because you know, the way uh, the She-Hulk got her powers was she got a, uh, after, you know, some type of getting shot in some type of skirmish or bank robbery or whatever, her cousin, Bruce Banner, uh, 
gave her a blood transfusion from himself. And his irradiated blood turned her into the She-Hulk. Well, she just did get shot, so. Yes. <laughs> All right, that is the question of the week right now. I'm going to put it out there. If you do have a comment on any of these, where or what do you think Sky is going to transform into? Not transform into, but what is the, the show going to transform Sky into? Um, there's five possibilities. If you guys have any other possibilities, we have the She-Hulk. Basically, it's a Hulk, but a girl. Miss Marvel, She's Spider-Woman, Mantis, and Farville. If you guys have any, if you guys want to vote for any of those, give us a call right there on our voicemail. Again, 206-415-4987. That is the question of the week. What or who do you think the show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. is going to transform sky into or what how well, how is her character going to evolve if you have any things that i did not say here leave us a voicemail and tell us what you think we'll play them on the show next week Word. And i want to say that what's also just to cap this off what's also interesting is that she's a uh, sky's already a all way four to begin with right so mm -hmm. we know that there might be some origins that we are not aware of yet she's not even aware of yet which is why she hasn't discovered her powers and then oh, being yeah. injected with what she already was injected with spoilers you know it's going to probably bring her out or augment what she already has so i'm really excited and i and i hope to god this keeps going on this show keeps going on we got to rally for it it really does so uh, we do want to get to you guys um and, and i know we're running late but this is horseplay guys we can't help it this is how it is. We do want to let you guys know that uh, the, we do our, we are following some indie games horseplay, and we're trying to get some of our allgame.com uh, fellow podcasters to enjoy these games as well. Um, there are a few games that uh, on the indie watch here, Yogi. Well, actually, no? I wanted to share some quick deals for cheap bastards because I think we'll do that uh, after this. Go ahead, do, do the indie watch. Real quick. Oh, okay, so yeah, yeah. Um... And I was spreading the word like crazy about uh, Soulforge. Um, mm -hmm. And I, like I say, the, the, this game is, has been... Um, it's, it's, the chi it's the baby of many different developers. But uh, Richard Garfield has been involved in it, who's the creator of um, Magic the Gathering. He's been a consultant on the project. And, uh, you know, everybody's talking about Hearthstone, but don't, don't, don't sleep on uh, Soulforge. It's, it's a very good game. The company behind it, Stoneblade Entertainment, they're very engaged with the community. Um, they're very generous. They listen to all the feedback and it's just, you stream Soulforge or do videos and you get lots of attention because it's such a niche and, 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 and the fans are just amazing. So mm -hmm. I'm going to be doing a lot more Soulforge. I mean, I mean, I've been on a Hearthstone kick, but I'm going to definitely be doing some more Soulforge as well and get, get back to my roots on uh, Twitch, but, um, and it's free and I mentioned it's free. Yes. It's on it iPad, right. it's on Steam, and the Android version should be coming out soon enough. Um, and I, I think we'll, I'll skip through the rest of it because uh, I definitely want to mention Armada. I do want to. Yeah, I was going to say that. Oh, again. okay. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say that. I do want to mention Armada Online because they, the developer, one of the developers has been on the show before, and they also have been, they were behind some cool games on the Sega Dreamcast and some other systems. Uh, th this game they're building, Ar Armada Online, is a labor of love. They really believe in, 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 in the game. It's something that they would like to play themselves. That's why they're making it. And uh, it's great seeing an old uh, Sega game come back, uh, an unofficial uh, sequel or mm -hmm. remix, if you if you will. And they're Definitely. really adding a lot more stuff to it. So make sure you vote for that over at Steam Greenlight. Uh, the more votes they get, the better. And then it could uh, you know, become an official Steam game. And then all it takes is a click, click yes. You don't have to pay any money. Uh, and tell your friends to do the same thing. Tweet it out, Facebook it, you know, Pinterest, whatever you got to do. Uh, these are really good guys. I'm telling you, that these are not the money grubby type people. They they're doing something because they really believe in it. And they do, they do. It. Well, um, right now, guys, we are going to uh, give you a few a uh, few websites, few places to go where if you don't have a lot of money. Um, I mean, myself, Yogi. Um, I know we're exactly like this. We don't really want to spend a lot of money on games. For one, we already have thousands already. Maybe not thousands, but definitely hundreds. But we don't want to spend a lot of money on games. So we look for deals, and we look for deals that we can show you guys and show off to you guys so you guys get the same deals. All right, don't miss out on a Sega Humble Bundle right now. 80% um, was it, Yogi, off? 
But yeah, the humble bundle uh, is gone, but they still they have a, a store sale where you get yeah the store off. sale eighty percent off. Yeah, and I hopefully it's still running by the time people listen to this. I I, I sniped some last minute things on there, up to eighty percent off on all the Sega games. Huge savings. That is huge, and of course. Uh, of course, the Steam sale, guys, that happens every single week. Um, there's, They have the sales that they're doing right now on Steam with the cheap games and, and, and the cheap uh, the titles. I mean, you get from anywhere from you get a bundle of games for $10. You know, Payday 2 is also, it's only ten nine or it's only nine ninety nine. Have you played that yet, Yogi? I, I got it off the Steam holiday sale. I got it. Reinstall it and play some more, but now it's free to play this weekend uh, through yes. Sunday midday. So if anybody wants to jump on it, get on uh, on Steam and <clears throat> just install it. That's all you got to do. And, then you and of course, it it's and free course. on PlayStation Plus. Oh, PlayStation! <laughs> <laughs> Go figure, PlayStation. Yes, PlayStation and of course, Plus is the best deal in gaming. Period. Xbox One, <clears throat> but and then uh, <laughs> I'm just messing around. But How do you guys, like course... your your edition of Civ Rev that you got for free this month? Uh, <laughs> anyway, and of course also oh, free on man. Steam that uh, myself and Yogi do play. I know I do play. Uh, of course, uh, uh, the the War Thunder, of course, and of course you guys know I play Arma too uh, with my clan down here on the bottom. And of course, I know Yogi has been playing a lot of Hearthstone, and we both play League of Legends. So, and all, uh, almost every one of those minus the Arma Two is free. So, I mean, it's not like you got to pay a whole bunch of money because you really don't have to just to play with us. So, Yogi, you got any uh, other deals that you want to make sure that you talk about? Yeah. Well, again, I want to invite everybody to join us on Hearthstone and So Forge free games, and of course, Marvel Puzzle Quest. Yeah. So. <laughs> or, there, 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 there are no slot. There are no slots in the B Team Alliance right now. Not at eleven dollars a slot. Oh. Unless you're willing to uh, donate. Unless you're willing to pay the eleven dollars, then you can it's, have uh, that If slot. you want to send PayPal yeah. donations, uh, th- that's uh, Captain Chaos uh, Smarty Pants, or no, no, no it's, it's, it's Captain Chaos in Hot Pants, right? At gmail.com. Yes. yes. Yeah, just send a PayPal money over there. Watch that be a real email address. Don't do that. Don't send your money to a black hole. <laughs> and ladies and gentlemen, he does have some hot pants. Mm, hot pants. Got my skinny jeans on tonight. I was going to ask if hot pants were the same oh, as skinny jeans. Oh, man. I, I don't even want to have that picture in my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> Disclaimer, you guys should not be wearing skinny jeans unless maybe if you're a skater. Then maybe you might get away with it. Not even if you're a skater, I don't care. I did, yeah. <laughs> Remember, guys, the Steam Free to Play weekend and Sunday around midday. I want to say one o'clock, but it could be a little bit earlier. So make sure you guys play those free to play games if you want to get them. If you're thinking about buying them, so you want to make sure that you get it. Sunday is the cutoff. But as always, of course, you guys, they Steam does play, have deals during the week as well, starting Monday morning. They have deals all the way through. I think it's Thursday, and then they do the weekend sale again. So it's every week like this, guys. So make sure you get your get on Steam, get your stuff up, and make sure when you are on Steam, come come on, check out the community, guys. Horse play. Come check us out. And, of course, Geeky Antics. If you guys aren't Geeky Antics right yet, you are wrong. Go check us out, guys. Geekyantics.wordpress.com. It's our network blog. You can check us out on anything and everything that we're doing. Are you dusting off anything today, Yogi? Yeah, real quick, like I said, I've been on a real kick with uh, Hearthstone and, and so forth. I think I've, I've uh, beaten that horse. And, of course, Marvel Puzzle Quest. <laughs> you know, we. I know Chip is there, too. But I do want to also say, with, as part of the Sega... Um, humble bundle and, and the sales, uh, the weekly bundle and the, and the sales they had in the store. I, I I have fifty Sega Genesis games all in one convenient place, and I'm gonna probably be streaming. I'm gonna do like some retro Fridays and Mondays or some kind of theme on Twitch and play those games. And there's a lot of good games, and there's some stinkers in there too. But oh man, uh, I already started streaming, and I'm over on my channel, Yogizilla. By the way, Twitch.tv forward slash Yogizilla. In case you didn't notice, but. <laughs> 
uh, I, I'm stoked about that. And and like, like you said, uh, I have a whole list of crap on Steam. Chip, how about you? You have okay. you uh, dusted off any games that you haven't played in a while, or is there anything you wanna you're planning to add to your playlist? I, I I'll plug one. Um, I picked this up last night. It was basically the the new generation of consoles had nothing to offer this week. Uh, <laughs> Surprise. They didn't have much to offer last week either. Titanfall. Um, Not not a fan, but um, I I picked up something. It was a game that we uh, interviewed the developer last year at PAX East, uh, which is Vlambear, the guys behind Ridiculous Fishing. Did you guys uh, ever check that out on iOS or Android? Mm -mm. I've heard of it. it. I've heard of it, it. it's I think I think it's a free I think it's a free game on iOS and Android. Uh it's a it's a hilarious old school graphic style game where slowly you build basically you go fishing and once you uh get your line down as far as you can, you gotta navigate back up and once you uh you get your line to back up out of the water all the fish go in the air and you break out your guns and you shoot the fish um and it's it's a fun little game to play anyways they came out with a new game this week i i don't know if it's on the 360 or not uh it came out on playstation uh on psn this week called lufthausers oh everybody's talking about that yeah tell, tell us about that uh Ever played Time Pilot? Yes. Okay. It's very similar to Time Pilot. Uh, the controls are very basic. Left and right, tur- uh, turn your plane in that direction. Uh, up will make uh, will give you boost and send you forward in whatever direction you're uh, pointing. And X is shoot. The idea is to shoot everything on the screen, uh, the planes, the boats, the blimp, the ginormous blimps uh, above you, and stay in the air. Um, to stop, to slow down, all you do is uh, stop boosting, and your plane will stall. Uh, if you stop shooting, your health regenerates, <laughs> hmm. and it, it's basically a shmup. Um, nice. You know, yeah, and it's got it's a very limited color palette. Um, maybe you know it's a lot of uh, orange and yellows and maroons. I saw that. And, I think it's a remake of an old game, wasn't it? Not that I'm aware of. Hmm. And um, you know, so and the idea basically being. Uh, if you try and string together as many kills to build up your combo meter, which builds up your score, and they have a ton of different enemies coming to you. It's got a great soundtrack, and right now for PlayStation Plus members, it's eight bucks. And uh, it was one of those games that I was playing last night. Okay, just one more, just one more shot. Yeah, let me take another shot. Uh, yeah, I really should go to bed after this next game yeah. and <laughs> you know two hours later it's like oh shit i'm not getting up for work tomorrow on time and uh <laughs> yeah uh it's a lot of fun it's you know it's kind of retro it, it's got a very retro look to it um it's even got a retro gameplay to it because it's basically high score it will give you certain challenges saying you need to do this which gets you skulls the more skulls you unlock gets you various uh different power-ups that you can put on your plane some make you go faster but your turning radius slows down some uh you know like i i had the spread shot an armor and a turbo engine there was one engine which was bullet propelled so when you uh, boosted forward, you had bullets coming out of your ass to get the <laughs> bad guys behind you while you were shooting forward. Would that be uh, consistent as farting? Yes, <laughs> you were farting bullets. Nice. And uh, except, you know, it was extremely slow and uh, really screwed up your turning radius. Mm, right. 
fun little game. And, you know, uh, not, nothing new, nothing different, but uh, certainly a way to kill a few hours. And they will melt away before you know it. All right. Hell yeah, man. Um, and as you guys know, I haven't really been doing any any other games this week. But I do want to start something here. Um, I go around to a lot of streams. Um, uh, lately, I've been going to the FIFA 2014 streams, the 2K14 uh, streams of basketball, and watching lots of people lately. And one guy that I've seen, and this guy has, he was taking so much shit from, from everybody. I mean, just people were talking trash, trolling the shit out of him. He was just, he was good. Uh, you know, and I want to give him a shout out. Pork Chops, he's in chat right now. Uh, if you guys ever, uh, you guys got PS, uh, PS4 and you guys have 2K14, you guys want to go play with him at the park, you guys go hit him up. He'll play some, he plays some pretty good ball for a video game. Anyway, but you guys go hit that up. That is uh, twitch.tv xx underscore pork chop xx. Guys, go check him out. Follow the stream. And uh, yeah. There you go, man. Got to get you a shout out because I did say something to him. I said, dude, I got to get you. I'm going to get you on my show on Thursday. I will shout you <laughs> out, man. I will shout you out. So got to get that shout out to him because uh, I had fun. I was not feeling very good trying to fall asleep. I think I watched him for like an hour and a half on my cell phone <laughs> until he's <laughs> like until he banned me for some reason. And I was well, like, why did I get banned? Why did I get banned? And then I couldn't I couldn't do anything on my cell phone. I had to go to the computer. <laughs> it's like three o'clock in the morning and everything. Well, actually, it is three o'clock <laughs> in the morning now. But, but yeah, big shout out to uh, Pork Shop. Keep uh, keep balling, man. I'll keep watching. Again, Yogi, you got anything to uh, to to say? Well, I was about to say I, I follow pretty much everybody that's in the chat. If you're cool, mm -hmm. you know, I'll follow you. And if you stream, yeah, I'll, I'll be happy to join you. We could do some cross streaming, whatever. I'll join your stream or whatever you want to do. But Pork Chop's going to have to give me some pointers on uh, Football Manager 2014 because, you know, I'm not really big of a soccer guy, but that game is strangely fun to me. I don't know oh, why. He, he plays basketball. Oh, if it's at FIFA. No, 2K14 no. NBA. Ah. He's in the park, man, shooting uh -huh. around in the park. A, a whole want, different sport. I, I want that game so bad, but I don't want a fucking PS4. I love basketball, so that's <laughs> cool. I mean, I What's your hate on Sony? Dude, I just can't do it, man. And if you come back when we have a, a a Sony bash night, I will allow you to come back and you will hear me with my problems with Sony. <laughs> if we do that right now, we're going to be on until 3, and I don't want to yeah, get pissed yeah. people off. I think we've your had an a episode dedicated to that, but it comes off, a lot, of, especially our early episodes. Yeah, Chip, just watch episodes like, Two through like uh, four, and then six through like seven. And right. When we had a third uh, host that was permanent on here, and when he was the Sony fanboy, and then we used to go into like some really epic, uh, passionate discussions about it. <laughs> I do have some news about that. Oh yeah. That Sony fanboy, you guys do remember our first? Was it uh, seven episodes he was with, or six episodes he was with us? No. More or less. Yeah. Four. Three or four. Anyway, but Soldier, um, looks like he, there is a po good possibility that Soldier will be joining us back on Horseplay. Yeah. Even, Which, yes, yes. It, um, he um, sent me a it, message. He said, I want to know how we can make lots of money doing this. And, like, are you ready to put in the work? It is a lot of work. Like, people don't understand. Like, the people that are popular on YouTube are, and stuff like that are the ones that got in when no one was doing it. So they're not necessarily the best at what they do. They were just the first. The ones that have to come in on it, you know, recent years, or recent, you know, three, five years, it's a like, grind. But we ain't scared. We're just having fun ain't, with it. And ain't. if we, you know, do bigger ain't things with it, even better. By the way, in the chat, they said, this is for you, Chip. They, they say you got to come back more often. Oh, we'll definitely do something again. We, we got to make a uh, This has uh, been fun. We're going to make you a recurring uh, honorary host. <laughs> da, da, da. <laughs> All right, guys, other notes, a few shameless plugs we have that we uh, want to make sure that we get out. The first thing is first, horseplay. This show right here, this long show right here, <laughs> is on Stitcher. Plus, it is on TuneIn Radio. Plus, BlackBerry. And last but not least, finally, it's been a long time coming, we are now on iTunes, guys. So go get that up. 
you guys do have iTunes, awesome. If you guys don't have iTunes, it's not really a big deal. You can listen to us on Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, and BlackBerry, of course, if you guys have the BlackBerry phones. Leave us some reviews on wherever you guys are at. Wherever you guys are coming from, leave us a review. You know, either you like it, hey guys, all show is awesome, or hey guys, show sucked. Hey, we'll take the corrective the cr- criticism. Don't mean we'll actually keep it or you know, we might delete it, but you know, we'll take it, of course. <laughs> <laughs> you guys can listen. Of course, more listeners mean more bigger promotions, bigger giveaways that we can do for the give for the community and our followers. So Tell everybody, guys. Just tell everybody. Horseplay is, and I'm going to tell you right now, I've I've had it from six other podcasters, including people from Knuckleballer Radio, B-Team Podcast. Well, I don't know. I don't think Chaos has said it to us yet, but Knuckleballer Radio. We got freaking uh, Zombie Cast, a lot of the other casts that we've had for, for from our local guests saying that we are a really good show, and I feel that we are. So, Spread the word, guys. Horseplay is here and is here to stay. So we are going to get up into the thousands of episodes if we have to. By that time, we'll have a freaking movie production studio. I promise you. <laughs> By a thousand you, episodes, you'll have, 1, the thousand, horse place, you'll have the horseplay cinematic universe is what you're saying. Exactly. You're damn right. <laughs> By episode 1000, yes, that is my goal, to be in, a, to be in my built studio to where I can bring guests and everything up to where I am at and say, hey, I'm going to fly you up here for the night. I don't care if you live in California. Shit. Let me get my private jet my, my wife bought me. <laughs> I'll do the helicopter. Hey, you know how I works. feel about you know how I feel about helicopters. <laughs> yeah. But if you guys can, get, leave us a call. Again, this is a, a voicemail that we set up, and we, we want to engage uh, more with you guys and get, get more acquainted with you guys just besides chat. We want you guys to be able to call on voicemail. If you guys aren't watching, the voicemail is 206-415-4987. Again, 206-415-4987. If they're good, guys, you guys leave us voicemails. If they're good, we will play them live. Um, we do have a couple right now, but we, we would like to have, you know, you know, seven to ten voicemails that we can play online. So we are going to roll those over to next week. Um, any of the music that you guys did hear tonight uh, is provided by TechnoX at technox.com that is techno and then uh, with a k and then the axe uh, go check him out he does all things from rap to rock to easy listening intros whatever you guys want to see so again humble bundle you guys can go check out all the deals there at humble bundle and highlights whew, video and audio of horseplay uncut will be available right here on the twitch page of ob1x2 and yogi zilla's channel of course at yogi zilla and, of course, on Yogi Zilla's YouTube channel as well, of course, along with Stitcher, TuneIn Radio, BlackBerry, and iTunes. Oh, my God, it's getting a lot to say, isn't it? <laughs> we want to uh, let you guys know, to, hey, go check out some of our friends at Gaming History 101, Sega Nerds, the Gaming of Shrew, formerly Sega Addicts, Caster, Casporius, Doctor Who Podcast. Disturbus. I said it wrong again, but Orange Lounge Radio, R9Cast, woo woo, Knuckleballer Radio, Zombie Cast, Agents of Shield, and the B Team Podcast, all on AllGamesNetwork.com, Network and or Stitcher. We say and and Stitcher because most of them are yeah yep. and or and yeah, or Stitcher. and or because all of them are all games. There are also lots of blogs, guys, that you guys can check out. You can check out for the first start our network blog again at geekantics.wordpress.com. Go check it out. Engage with us. We will talk to you. I, I promise. We will say hi because <laughs> we're both on it normally all the time. So uh, we have seen a huge response of from uh, our listeners and some from other podcasters on our show. So we really appreciate all the uh, the related content and all the shout outs that we're getting from other podcasts. We really appreciate that. Upcoming episodes. Yogi, what do we got for the upcoming episodes before we get out of here? So yeah, well, uh, we should go come back to talking about Walking Dead. There's a lot, been a lot of stuff going on in there. I actually haven't catched this week's episode, so I need to watch that. Um, and maybe go back into the zombie talk. I know Sean likes being on the show and Matt likes being on the show, so we'll probably get them back on here. Um, and we'll talk about, uh, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. Uh, and, you know, keep rallying that as well. Um, and maybe I'll, I'll try to convert you to Doctor Who at some point. <laughs> Good luck. 
But uh, also, we, we might be doing some uh, bonus episodes of Horseplay, so stay tuned for that. We're going to probably call them the secret stages or the hidden stages, something like that. We'll, 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 we'll figure out the branding. Maybe uh, Chip can help with, with that. He's good with the naming. But uh, also, <laughs> we will do uh, a segment we've been putting off for a little while, uh, just kind of going back uh, down memory lane, talking about some n- nostalgic value of gaming. And like, may- what I would like to do is like talk about games that we remember being good, and then when we go mm-hmm. back and play them and say, yeah, that was just nostalgia. They, they weren't as good as we remember. And, and, or, and then talk about the games that actually really were good and still hold up today. So stuff like that, I think it would be really cool to do uh, something fun. like that. That is? Yeah, that's pretty much it. All right. And uh, Mr. Uh, Captain Chaos, do you have any uh, any closing remarks for uh, our listeners and uh, viewers? Well, you already mentioned you can go check out all our stuff over at the bteampodcast.com. We are on allgames.com every Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. But if you go over to our uh, webpage, uh, we have links to our Facebook, our Twitter, and our infamous YouTube channel. And uh, next month, we will be at PAX East. We're going to be doing at least two shows live uh, from the convention center. And, uh, you know, we did what we usually get somewhere between 10 and 20 video interviews that'll be going up the week afterwards. And, uh, it's three days of hell, but it's, (laughs) you know, uh, there's a reason I don't do this professionally. Um, (laughs) make sure you wear your Dr. Scholl's. Yeah. Yeah. Dr. Scholl's and because it's in Boston, I always, yeah. And uh, antibacterial stuff. And because it's in Boston, <laughs> I only wear Yankees and Giants. Uh, <laughs> I love that you do t-shirts. that. I love when you, I love that you do that. Every time I watch those videos, I'm like, oh, you're really sticking it to the New Englanders. Huh? <laughs> wow. Oh, so if anybody hears about anybody that gets lynched up in uh, New England area, <laughs> it is probably Captain Chaos. <laughs> that being said, guys. This is Horse Play. My name is Obi-1X2. I have Yogi Zilla as my co-host, guest host tonight, Captain Chaos. You can catch us all on Twitter any time of the day. I'm sure we'll answer right there at Obi-1X2, at Captain Chaos, and at Yogi Zilla. Thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for listening again. Leave us a voicemail. We'll try to get it on next week if it's a good voicemail. Voicemail number is 206-415-4987. We will see you guys next week. Peace. Peace. We are out, gentlemen. That was fun, guys. Hell yeah. Sorry it went a little bit long, Chip. We we start talking, man, especially yeah. if we got a guest. When we go, man, we go for like <laughs> three and a half, four hours, man. I think Chip knows better than anyone what it is to go to pass, yeah. way past yeah. the schedule. <laughs> My goal uh, with the B team is to get it under two and a half, and it doesn't happen that often. Well, it's good to have goals. Yeah. Get, get hey, tonight's was an hour, tonight's I think is under an hour and a half. Yeah, I was surprised because I, when I looked at Skype, you were already off the show. I'm like, really? Wow. Well, Fred wasn't on. Fred adds an hour. That's true, because he'll give you the whole uh, history breakdown and uh, the fun facts that he gives you. He's like the uh, Snapple bottle cap uh, when it comes to like the facts. <laughs> it's like I never knew that. Yeah, Fred, Fred, Fred's a good guy. We give him shit, but, you know, you don't come on our show without getting a ton of shit. <laughs> oh, so. yeah, that's why we need to get you here as a recurring uh, guest host so we can give you crap. You, know, you, you get a free pass to the first episode. 
then, <laughs> then we gotta you know keep derailing you and and uh, and hazing you for for fun for fun. Oh, oh yeah. a good spirit. I mean, <laughs> like you know, and obviously you got either of you guys want to come on uh, B team. Let us know, and you know we're we're always. Uh, I always like bringing in guest host and whatnot just to have a different voice in there. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> well, um, uh, here in about two weeks, I'll be actually done with my uh, my bowling. Um, so then, I mean, that's why we this is started at 11 o'clock on Thursday, so they bowl to like 10. So, um, <clears throat> But, yeah, I'll definitely join there. That, that would be kind of fun uh, yeah, to, be on, to be on there and then go right into our show, especially if you can join us for our show as well. It would be cool. Especially, you know, whatever that time it is. Yeah, our, it would be nice if our show got over every week before 11, but it doesn't <laughs> happen. Oh, but, man. All right. Yeah, guys, that was awesome. Captain Chaos, Chip, I really appreciate you joining us, man. Anytime you want to come on, especially if we're talking Marvel stuff or comic books or superheroes, dude, I expect um. you. Give, give me, you know, put up the bat signal, and if I can make it, I'll be there. We'll fly it, man. Appreciate it. All right, man. Get to bed before your wife yells at you. Yeah. <laughs> See ya. All yeah, right, brother. Bye. All right. All right dude, let me stop the recording. Awesome. You got a little bit of post game action there, guys. That was oh. Chip Sella from B Team Podcast and uh, Agents of Shield Cast. Make sure you support them. Great guys over there. And each of them got their own little things going on, too. So check it out. Most of that stuff's all over at uh, allgames.com. And, uh, yeah, there's, there's a chance that uh, Obi and I might be going over there, you know. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have See you bye. guys. Peace.